Needless. Needless. Podcast. Hey, Phantom Maniacs, welcome to the newest episode of the Needless Things Podcast, where we talk about toys, movies, music, and all manner of pop culture dorkery. I am your host, Dave, and uh, I had kind of a rough morning. So I, as I mentioned last week, I'm working a lot this week. Uh, I just got off of three days. I've got one day off, and I go back for four more days. And these are 12-hour shifts. Uh, so it's it's a lot. Uh, so last night, I've, I've had to reschedule two different things for the podcast because of just timeliness and how things have fallen. Uh, so last night was the only night I had to record for this week. And I was very excited that today was going to be my day off, and I was excited that I was going to be talking to our head of research, Ryan, about Toy Fair-ish things. Obviously, there wasn't actually a Toy Fair this year, uh, but lots of people made lots of announcements, and we had a great time talking about it. Unfortunately for me, I had a little too great a time talking about it. Uh, I I had myself a nice tall glass of bourbon on the rocks, Elijah Craig, you know it. Uh, And... It just hit me a little different last night. I don't know if it's because it's it had been a little while since I'd had any beverage. Uh, and, you know, I'd been up since 3.30 in the morning. We talked until like 10.30 or so, so it was a long day. Uh, and it just it hit me a little different. And also, during the course of this conversation, I felt like I was getting stuffier and stuffier and stuffier. So that was kind of driving me crazy. Uh and I think in order to cope with that annoying me, I was just sort of drinking a little faster. But anyway, the, po- the point of all this is, you've got a really fun episode where we talk about all the toy reveals that have happened over the past couple of weeks. Uh, and this morning, I had a little bit of a rough morning. And it's been years since I've had a hangover. And I, I, uh, I woke up around 5.30 this morning just not feeling real great uh and i did the things that you do and eventually i got a little bit more sleep the headache went away everything felt better i got up i had some breakfast and by the time i was done with my breakfast my morning diet coke and my uh morning perusal of the masters of the universe toy book uh which i am still making my way through although i'm close to the end and i'm a little sad about that uh by the time i was done with my morning ritual uh, I felt pretty good, and I have to say at this point, it is now 7.15 p.m., and I have accomplished a phenomenal number of things uh, considering how I felt this morning. Uh, let's see. We've got Hats for Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast, new episode next week where we'll be talking about uh, the G.I. Joe reveals for from the 24th of February. Uh, as well as all kinds of other G.I. Joe stuff. So I, I we got in hats for that because I, I <laughs> this might be dumb, but a thing popped up on Instagram and it was this much for this many hats. And I was like, you know what? I can do that just to check them out, to, to have a few to give away and see how it works out. Uh, so I vetted the site and it was legit, uh, made my order. And I don't even know if it's been a week since I put the order in. The hats get, got here today. You can see them uh, if you follow Audible Interlude Podcast on Instagram. Uh, there's a picture of the hat. It, it looks great. Uh, I mean, for a cheap trucker hat, it's really cool looking. I like them. I'm very happy. So those came today. Uh, I shipped out a bunch of stuff that I sold on eBay. Uh, I got a, just just some clerical stuff done. Uh, that Batman and Two-Face set went up today, which, by the way, you know what? I feel like I need to do a little follow-up on that uh, because we talk about it during the episode, but because we hadn't seen the full set yet, uh, there wasn't a ton to say about it. So if you don't know, 112 Collective, uh, I I collect... I'm not a completist by any means, but I do love the line. I think they're the best action figures that have ever been made. Uh, And they're, they're pricey, but they're worth it to me. So today... A Batman Two Face or Golden Age Batman and Two Face set went up for pre order to be delivered in May to June. And I think this is smart because what I feel like Mezco's doing now is they'll show preview pictures 
and then like six months later they'll put up the preview or uh, the pre-order for it to ship three or four months after that so i feel like now they're waiting until they know the product is kind of close to done before taking the pre-order and i think that's pretty awesome uh so here just here are some thoughts i've got about this set uh, first of all batman and two-face look magnificent i i love them uh, i love these versions of these characters and you know i would like to have this set for sure but there are a few little things that i don't love uh so batman includes one two three four five six seven eight ten twelve total different hands it looks like uh he's got three portraits one unmasked portrait uh he's kind of got the smiling golden age batman face that i really really like uh He's got the hood that goes around his neck when his mask is down. He has a belt buckle bat radio that plugs into the front of his utility belt. Looks awesome. And then, of course, he's got the stand. uh, And then comes with punching effects. So it's like this big, translucent yellow swoop that attaches to his fist. There are two of these. uh, And then also, like, bang effects that attach to those that are to look like comic book impact uh, illustrations. It comes with three different batarangs, a rebreather mask, two different bat ropes, and uh, two bat bolas. Uh, lots of stuff. Looks great. Very impressed with Batman. And then on Two Face's side, uh, he also has like a dozen different hands. Uh, uh, several of them have the coin. And then he's got two heads. So here, here's one of my first issues with this is the gloved hands look weird to me on Two-Face. I'm going to assume that they're accurate. Uh, You know, I'm not going to sit here and look up source art because that's, you know, Mezco, it's not 100% what they do anyway. A lot of their stuff is their interpretation of it. And I just now noticed that Two-Face's shoes are different colors. He's got on, uh, like, Oxfords, I think they're called, or saddle shoes or whatever. And the right one's brown and white, and the left one's black and white. It looks really cool. I just noticed that. Uh, so one portrait is Two-Face. One portrait is Harvey Dent. I, I don't love that, because Harvey Dent is not going to be walking around wearing this suit. And I understand the idea that Mezco has released a number of suit bodies that you could put this Harvey Dent head on. But I would rather have two different Two-Face heads. Like one angry and one kind of mellow or something like that. I would rather have two two face portraits than the Harvey Dent head because I'm not using that Harvey Dent head for anything. Uh, and then the hands, I wish he came with at least one set of ungloved hands because the gloved hands look a little weird to me. Just my personal preference there, I guess. Uh, and then he also comes with a valise, which is similar to an attache, but not uh, with a bomb inside or a time bomb inside. Uh, and then a number of different coin effects, different coins, a switchblade. Uh, no guns, though. This Harvey Dent does not include any guns. And what Mezco has done, and I don't know if this is part of the Warner Brothers edict that their characters can't be sold with guns, because that's why McFarlane Toys DC figures don't come with guns, even though they've got gun hands, which is... Don't get me started. Uh, so Mezco has offered, in addition to this $190 set for two figures, which really, uh, you know, not bad. That that works out to $95 a piece, which is pretty much standard Mezco 112 Collective pricing at this point. Uh, So if you want guns to go with this set, you have Double Trouble Weapons Expansion Pack, which is a Mezco original thing. It's not branded. That's a fantastic set. It comes with two Tommy guns. Well, it's two of every gun. Uh, Tommy gun, a 45, a revolver, some kind of little mini shotgun looking thing, uh, tons of gold coins, two money bags, two soft goods money bags, and a bunch of blast effects. Uh, 35 bucks, I think it's a great value for what this is, but essentially, it's called Double Trouble, it comes with two of everything, it's very clearly meant to go with this Two-Face, and I suppose is Mezco's solution to not being able to give Two Face gun, but they, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the deal is. Uh, maybe it just didn't cost out to include these uh, with the set. And I will say this to Mezco's credit, they do not have any images of Two Face using these. 
to suggest like, oh, well, they should have come with that, but we just want to get more money out of you. Like I, the way that they've done this, I, I think they kind of did the best that they could. Uh, so I did not order this set, but Phantom Jr., who is a, a collector uh, in his own right, after seeing it, came downstairs, handed me a wad of money and said, can I give you this now? And you order those for me and, you know, we'll we'll pay I'll pay you back we'll figure it out or whatever I really really want to have those figures so I I did order a set for him hoping I'm not going to be too jealous when they arrive but there's so much other stuff coming out uh I just can't spend that money I've got I've already got the older Two-Face that Mezco did I've got a ton of Batmans I just couldn't justify this for myself Uh, and then without telling him I threw in this Double Trouble Weapons Expansion Pack too, because he's a good kid and he deserves it. Uh, he's also upstairs, so I hope he didn't hear that. Uh, all right, so that's uh, new, new, new toy news before we get to the full meat of the episode. Uh, the other toy news, and there are a couple of other things I want to address here in the intro. Uh, I want to talk about likenesses a little bit. So it's the weirdest thing. You'll see figures based on real people, whether it's Marvel Legends or WWE or AEW or whatever, and the same figure, people have completely different reactions to. They'll look at it and go, that doesn't look anything like them, and another person will be like, wow, this is an incredible likeness. Uh, And I think here's the difficulty with likenesses, is the first thing is, nothing your brain tells you is quite correct. Your brain is is with anything that like a likeness, and I've talked about this on the show before. Your brain is taking an amalgamation of all of the different times that you've seen this person and projecting an image. And when you say, "Well, okay, well, if you can't trust your brain, then go look up a picture," but here's the other problem: is people look different in different mediums. Uh, and and something that kind of got me thinking about this: uh, Brian Myers from the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. Uh, the most professional wrestler, uh, one of my current favorite wrestlers. So I've I've been seeing him for years in WWE, uh, on YouTube, on the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast YouTube channel. I've seen him in printed stuff. I've seen him on trading cards, uh, on on figure packaging. I have seen figures of him, and he looks you know a little different every time he's represented. Now part of this is passage of time and the different time period the images came from, but part of it is just. Somebody is going to look different in a picture than they look in a video, than they look uh, on a on a like regular photograph versus a, a studio photograph. You just look different in every thing. And what kind of got me thinking about this is I went to a wrestling show a few months ago, and I met Brian Myers. And when he first walked up, I didn't know who it was. I was like, oh my gosh, who is this? Like, because he looked really like drawn and and just, uh, I don't want to say thinner because that makes it sound like because he's not a bulky guy. I mean, he's you know muscled out. He's a wrestler, but his face just looked much narrower and thinner than I had in my head. But that's what he looked like. And as I stood there talking to him for a while, like it's almost like my brain reconciled what I was looking at with what I think of as Brian Myers. It was just really weird, and it got me to thinking about, you know, all these times where you look at a likeness and you're like, that doesn't look anything like that person. But you know what? Maybe it does from the reference they had or from that specific thing or or whatever the case may be. I think my point here is I think likenesses are very tricky. Uh, We know some people are famously more difficult to capture, like Harrison Ford. Uh, But in general, I think a lot of times we're far too hard on action figure likenesses i i think for the most part you know and obviously there's some terrible figures out there and mcfarland's making most of them uh but for the most part i think toy companies are doing a better job with most likenesses than we might be giving them credit for uh so anyway that was my first thought my second thought is this and and this is something this is another thing that it's been it's been tearing me apart uh i want to be so excited for the new matt reeves batman uh, I'm a Robert Pattinson. I'm, I'm g- great. Zoe Kravitz. Like everything looks very, very cool. I'm excited to see the movie in the theater, but I have reservations. There's some things about the trailer that I don't love. Uh, there's some things about the presentation that I don't love. Uh, and then I found this quote from Matt Reeves. In my view, I just feel drawn to finding the grounded version of everything. Which, that right there gives me pause, because 
I hate when people say grounded in relation to a comic book or a fantasy property. Uh, so to me, it would be a challenge in an interesting way to try and figure out how that could happen. Even the idea of something like Mr. Freeze. That's such a great story, right? I think there's actually a grounded version of that story, which could be really powerful and could be really great. I get more and more grossed out every time he says grounded. So... I love the fantastical side of Batman, but this iteration, obviously, while being to me, I think it is very comics faithful, but I don't think that this one is necessarily, it doesn't lean as hard into the fantastical, I guess. All right, Buster Brown, if you are doing what Christopher Nolan did, which is exactly what this sounds like, and creating a world for Batman where characters like Clayface and Poison Ivy and Man Bat can't exist, then you are failing at creating a world for Batman. Let me continue. Uh, but I think to me what would be interesting would be to try and unwind the fantastical and see, well, how could would that, that make sense here? And so that's kind of my view, how I see it. Well, it's also how Christopher Nolan saw, uh, saw it, and it's why he made two excellent movies that are not good Batman movies, and then one third movie that's just terrible in, from any point of view. Uh, and I don't this this bothers me so much because it's such an uninteresting take on Batman. Uh, it's it's almost a parody of how people think Hollywood sees Batman and his world. Like, it's almost a Saturday Night Live sketch. Like, well, this millionaire dresses up in a bat suit and does kung fu on people dressed up like penguins. But let's try and make it real. Like, it, it's... It, this take irritates the shit out of me. And it may not... I'm, I may be overreacting to this. Uh, you know, I, I, this is... I, we're going to see it next week, opening night. Uh, all three of us are going to be there in the theater. I'm I'm hopeful i want an exciting great movie i want to love it but this take is is so lame to me uh that I, you know i i hope we we don't get this from from the man who made movies about talking monkeys who rode horses and took over the world by the way and and look, that may actually be justification for everything that he just said, because maybe to him that was a grounded version of Planet of the Apes, and if that's the case, then he's just trying to figure out narratively a way to make these things work, rather than saying, well, we're not going to have a lady that literally controls plants. Uh, or, or clay, I want a clay face in a movie so bad, you guys. And look, the effects are up for it now. It's time. Uh, but anyway, none of this may matter because DC is so you know psychotic that this movie may come out and then they'll decide well it's time for a brave and the bold batman next who knows uh so that's that's my long drawn out thoughts for the intro now it's time to listen to myself and our head of research ryan schweck and our long drawn out uh progressively more drunken as time goes on thoughts about all of the great toy releases we've heard about the past couple of weeks next week please tune into the newest episode of audible interlude a gi joe podcast uh, where we will be talking about the G.I. Joe portion of those things. And let me just tell you guys, we had segments planned for next week, but there's so much freaking news, I think it's probably going to be a news episode. So there you go. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, check out the Needless Things YouTube channel. This week, uh, I put up my massive review of the Razor Crest. Uh, people seem to be enjoying it, so go check that out. And then today, I put up my reviews of... Uh, or I'm sorry, my review of the Psycho Goreman Early Bird Action Figure Kit. If you don't know what that is, go to the Needless Things YouTube channel, like, subscribe, share, but check that video out, and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. So there you go. Uh, and now, you know what? Grab yourself a big tall glass of water, because Ryan and I are drinking enough for all of you. Uh, and enjoy, not really Toy Fair, to 2022. <laughs> Well, we're, we're starting. We're starting now. Hey, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the show our head of research, Mr. Ryan Schweck. Oh, good to be on tonight talking about 
my favorite and sometimes least favorite subject. Well, well, speaking of, okay, so have you got oh, this yeah. guy yet? I have. I didn't buy him. I've seen him like four times now, and I skip it, dude. Every time. Okay, so this is uh, for the listeners. I am holding up the new retro Marvel Legends or retro Spider Man, whatever it is, Hobgoblin, which is the figure I was most excited about in this wave. I was so stoked to be getting like a classic looking hobgoblin and now I've got him and he's kind of a piece of shit. Yeah. Did you enjoy your happy meal toy? that you got? <laughs> Dude. Okay. So he's the, the first and most apparent problem is I don't understand why they made his gloves and his boots and his singlet, a different orange from his cape and his hood. Yep. I, I don't get that. But then his glider is such a little piece of shit that he can't even, you can't get him to stay on at all. Like the Green Goblin gliders are nice. great. Yeah. But this one, his feet don't, there's nothing, they don't click into place in any way. They just sit there. You would literally have to like use an adhesive to get him to stay on this piece of shit that has like the bottom is just like there's barely any sculpt on there it just it just looks terrible he can't hold his pumpkin bomb which by the way the pumpkin bomb is awesome it's translucent orange and it's got like green smoke and a little green face on it uh but he can't hold it so it doesn't matter Uh, really really weak ass effort from an otherwise like awesome wave yeah, and the rest the rest is great. Spider Armor Spider Man ended up really good. Armored like, Spider Man and Shocker are two of the best Hasbro Marvel Legends ever. Yep, I've not seen Symbiote Spider Man yet. He is the he's one great, but he's got he's got pins, but he's all black, so it's not that big yeah, of a deal. I don't know. But uh, yeah, he's he's great too. Really, really strong wave, but this hobgoblin. So, so for the listeners, this is what we're going to be doing. Only we're going to be doing it to toys that aren't even out yet, because there was no toy fair this year, except that NECA and Super Seven and Mezco and everybody else decided to make a bunch of toy announcements around the time of toy fair. So once again, we kind of got to sit here at home and watch as everything rolled out, and the companies showed us what's going to be coming out probably three years from now, the way things are going. Uh, but but to kind of break the ice, to get into it a little bit, uh, I've got two questions for you. The first one is, and, and we had to do a little pre-show research for this one. Were you able to track down your oldest unfulfilled pre-order? So I went back and looked, and actually I was really surprised because I, right now I have pre-orders that are more recent but apparently aren't going to come out for a year and a half. Um, (laughs) But the oldest. We'll we'll uh, revisit this when we record the 2024 episode. (laughs) Um, The oldest I have right now is just from September. Oh, no Um, kidding. Well, that's the one I have in my name. The oldest I've got is the uh, George Lucas uh, Black Series figure from September. Now, you could also count. Oh, I forgot about that the Batman 89 that I'm purchasing from you. (laughs) That is technically, I guess, a pre-order. Well, and that's the oldest one that I've got. It's the 112 Batman from Mezco pre-ordered on January 15th of 2020. Two years, over two years ago. And the email, because I had to go back and check, the email actually does give the estimated date that it was supposed to come out. Do you want to take a guess as to what that was? I feel like it was like, wait, when was the pre-order? January, 2020. I feel like it was like May or something. It seemed like it wasn't very long. I was like, that's no, it was, it was uh, originally, it was supposed to be between September and November of 2020. We have now, I had to stop and think, I was like, man, that's been so long. I hope Dave remembers that I was going to buy the extra one from him. Um, so we zoomed right past November 2020. Uh, they updated at one point, and it was supposed to be May of 2021. Mm-hmm. And then it was August of 2021. And then I think it went all the way back to like March of 2022 from there at one point. Uh, and now, actually, you know what? I meant to, I meant to uh, pull this up, and I yeah. didn't do it. 
What's old Mesco saying these days? I want to say it's March to May right now. And, you know, um, I, at first, when they were kind of saying that it was because they were doing this new seamless body and blah, 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 I was like, all right, you know, it's one that I prefer they get right. Um, so right now it's saying, yeah, March to May of 2022. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, uh, they've probably run into issues with the material of the suit. And, and you know, typically – they're shipping these things back and forth between the factory in China and their headquarters and approving things. And now even that process is drawn out and difficult. So just approving things, which this figure I'm sure required a number of adjustments and changes and Mm -hmm. and fine tuning. So, and look, I'm not mad about it. I'm with Mezco so far. Every single thing I've bought from them in the 112 series has been worth the wait in the end. Oh, yeah. So I'll wait, get the product right, and then send it to me, and it's fine. I'm not <laughs> I'm not mad. How bad is it going to be if they give out a Michael Keaton Batman Flashpoint figure before they get out <laughs> 1989 or uh, you know what? Girl or whatever he's going to it. It wouldn't surprise me if McFarlane got one out before... I Before the Mezco the one dropped, I bet that, they might. that's one of the few lines that has had no problems getting out a wide variety of product in a timely manner this whole time. It's been weird. Yeah, I don't know how they're shipping or what they're doing, but maybe Todd you, sold one of his baseballs to pay for like better shipping <laughs> containers. Yeah, you find that stuff fast, and it's really not that hard to find. Like if you no. want it, generally you can find the figure. Uh, the, the only problem, of course, is that all of the figures now have side eye, which is terrible. Have yeah, you noticed this? I have. The Ugh. Pat girl is real bad about it. I yeah, I don't care for that at all. But apparently, he's heard the fans and he's he's uh, changing that. That was that was literally because this is he's running the show. He's the Vince McMahon of McFarlane <laughs> Toys, and he made the decision to give them the offset eyes because he thought figures looking straight ahead just looked like mannequins, and like. I get it, but I, I don't want them glancing away either. That's just weird. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't care for it. Uh, so what is uh, question number two? What is your most recent pre-order? Uh, I Today, I pre-ordered Quake and Speedball from the new Marvel Legends wave. I, uh, I ordered two of the retro rhinos mm-hmm. because I actually like that. But, oh, I need one for Phantom Jr., is collecting now too, which is part of the reason why I'm uh, buying less Marvel Legends. Uh, but he's been dying for a Rhino, and I kept telling him, "You know they're going to do a retro one. You know they're going to just like Hulk or Kingpin, like they're going to put it on that big nice card back." Retro Rhino's coming, and sure enough, it came out today. And I actually like this. I think we'll see once it's in hand, which I think is September. Yeah, uh, I think I like it more than the Build a Figure one that I've got right now. The face is the head is definitely better. The yes. face sculpt yeah. is better on it. I like it's got the eyes on it. Like I'm just that point where like I just can't keep rebuying Marvel Legends when they redo them like this because I've got the build a figure and I thought about putting it up on Macari today and just get like put it up for like fifty bucks so I know somebody yeah. bite real fast just to buy the well, retro. Here's Okay, so I uh, before we started recording, I talked about how I sold a few things on eBay, uh, which I, I hate eBay. Uh, but and I, I love buying on Mercari; it's fantastic. Selling stuff on there though is annoying because I I don't know if this is your experience. I just get lowball offers all day long. I'm telling you, most people that just go through there and lowball people just to see if I can get anything. <laughs> I think I lowballed somebody like $65 on a Black Series snow speeder the other day just to see what would happen. And, well, and that's the thing is like, if it was just every once in a while, it wouldn't be a big deal. But, and, and, and my prices, the prices I'm putting up are not like maxed out eBay prices. I put it up for what I think is pretty reasonable market value. Like, say, say I've got something for 60 bucks. I'll get, hey, would you sell it for 34? <laughs> fucking no i won't 
go somewhere else. Go find it in a store or whatever. Well, most of the stuff I put up, you can't find in a store, uh, except for this weird gray Lobo that I happened to cross that. I mean, I guess uh, after fees, it'll be like $16 in profit. Not worth my time at all. Uh, all right. So one one more thing I wanted to get into. Well, I guess this is technically part of Toy Fair. Did you see, have you got Toy Arc pulled up? Yep. Toy Arc is like the best resource uh, for those who want to follow along at home. They're awesome. So first thing on Toy Arc, these Sarazoic warriors from Boss Fight. Look at these things. I So uh, when I first pulled up Toy Arc tonight, this is the first time I saw them and I didn't read what they were at first. And I was like, are these crazy like, he-man figures that i've never heard of or <laughs> mutant ninja turtle figures that i just don't remember these characters it, they look really cool I mean, they're great i mean they look the bright colors are fantastic mm-hmm. they almost look like like remember the toxic crusaders figures and how bright and like neon those were mm-hmm. they're yeah, kind of like that but dinosaurs the punk rock stegosaurus is amazing like <laughs> I mean, they're all pretty darn tremendous. I don't know what scale they are. Oh, one twelfth scale. So yeah. these, okay, these are probably going to be very similar because I'm looking at them now and looking at the construction. Mm-hmm. Probably very similar to those Mad Balls figures that uh, the listeners can see reviews of on the Needless Things YouTube channel. But it looks like pretty close to that. I, I, they're they're big and chunky and colorful. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be very interested to see how much these cost. Yeah, it looks like they're going to do one wave and they have more planned depending on how the first wave works. Yeah, yeah. They've got, uh, let's see. Oh, they've all got articulated jaws. Very important. Mm-hmm. Uh, pre-orders are going to be March 2022. In-hand estimate is early 2023. That's fair. I mean, this is boss fight. They've <laughs> They've been doing this forever. I like it says the story is being worked on. No names yet. <laughs> so yeah, like, yeah. They're writing a story for these. That is guys. that is not my biggest concern. <laughs> well, but I think you know it's funny because I don't care about that. I just want stuff to look cool. The only stories I care about is the stuff I grew up with. Right. Star Wars, G.I. Joe, He Man, like that stuff matters to me. But now modern day. Like I, I, these look cool. I won't, if they do a comic, I won't read it. Mm-hmm. If they do like a YouTube series, I'm, I'm probably not going to look at it. I just want cool looking figures, but I think it is smart to create a world because apparently that was one of the big things about the Valiverse, the action force figures mm-hmm. is that people were like, well, we need supporting media. So, I mean, I guess that's a thing people want. I don't care. I just want cool toys. Yeah. And these fit that bill. Yeah, these will look great on a shelf. Uh, so if you're listening at home, a lot of the resources that we used, uh, Action Figure Attack on Instagram, Action Figure Insider, it's a website and it's on Instagram. Uh, the Foosh Toy Arc is the most valuable resource overall. Uh, and then Galactic Hunter. Uh, those are all great resources for toy reporting, toy news, whatever. Uh, and also follow the Needless Things Podcast Instagram uh, page where I pretty much just repost all the cool stuff I find. Okay. So my, the first thing I've got, Oh, you know what? We got to cover one more thing before we move on. So we're recording. It is a Tuesday. (laughs) It's Uh two 22, 22. Mezco is releasing a golden age, Batman and two face two pack. (laughs) tomorrow why would you not do that today and i feel like most of their releases are on tuesday anyway a lot of the time i I just don't i don't know it's so weird so weird and that set looks like i can't wait to see they teased it i guess comic-con yeah i think it was or or what would have been san diego comic-con uh and they had, you know, they had a couple of pictures, but nothing in detail. I can't wait to see what the set looks like, although I'm I'm kind of dreading it because it's going to be pricey, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's going to be at least 150 bucks, if not more. Yeah, I don't know how to judge what they're going to do this time. Mezco, 
oddly hasn't jacked to their prices up as much as some of the other lines such as Hasbro. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It depends here how much it comes with. Well, and that's the big thing is it like, if it's just the two figures and a reasonable amount of 112 accessories, then I could see it coming in at about 150. But if they decide they have to throw in like two faces, giant coin or some shit, then I, I've heard it's going to come with some sound effect, like uh, a I don't cow need and a whatever, like it's going to have those. You can, I guess, display with it. Some. Oh, oh, well, yeah, that's not a big deal. Yeah, but like I don't a little need, piece of plastic. I thought you meant like, like electronic oh, no, sound no, no. effects. Like it, a no. show kapow. Okay. Burst. Okay. Yeah, that would be that would be fine. Whatever, I I won't use them, but that that won't jack the cost up a tremendous amount. It should. Uh, so that yeah, we already knew about that, but they announced today that it was going up for pre order tomorrow. So that's tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so I've got uh, here here's the companies that I followed along with. I've got NECA, uh, Playmates, Boss Fight because I've got one other thing from Boss Fight. Uh, Mezco, McFarlane, Super 7, Haya Toys, Jada Toys, and Hasbro. Oh, Hasbro. Who do you who do you want to start with? I don't know. <laughs> do we want to start on a, a, a positive note or a, a well, not so positive note? NECA has by far got the largest slate, so we should probably save them for the middle somewhere. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know what? Let's start with Playmates Toys. It's not a ton of stuff. But I do want to get your thoughts about the new Star Trek line because we have, I haven't had the opportunity to talk to you about that. Let's see. Let me pull them up here. I don't know if I saw all of them. Well, they're not a ton. Yeah. Um, right out of the gate, I think they're just six figures, a phaser, and an Enterprise. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're basically very similar to the 90s Star Trek figures, but with more articulation. Almost like the Masters of the Universe Origins figures. Which, yeah, I mean, I guess they saw how good those were all doing. I can't find pictures of these. Uh, more. What day did uh, Look up uh, Playmates Star Trek Universe. Let's see. Um, yeah, I've, I wish that they would do the original Ninja Turtles line, but in that Masters of the Universe Origins style. That would be fantastic, even though I'm getting all the Super 7s. Like, I would love to see a retail version of that. They, I don't know. I don't know who they're for. This That's, is the problem. That was going to be my first thing. I, all right, kids, so these, don't, kids don't care about Star Trek. They're five-inch scale, which, you know, that's that's what Star Trek used to be. So they're kind of going back to that. But, yeah, I don't know who these are for. Like, I, I like them. But I'm not as excited about them as I would have been if they were like Star Trek Black Series, you yeah. know, which yeah. is which is 100 percent what I was expecting. Maybe they well, Playmates has all the rights to Star Trek, don't they? Yeah, they've got the master license, but that doesn't mean it can't be pieced out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. I just want quality figures but i do appreciate that they're starting with wrath of khan and hopefully they have the intention because they nobody has ever released a full wrath of khan set Mm -hmm. diamond select toys came the closest but they were all retailer exclusives so if i can just get the cast of wrath of khan in one scale that all matches i'll be good with my star trek collecting forever i'll be curious to see if these like what kind of accessories and stuff these come with right well they can't be like the 90s ones and come with like matching purple phasers and tricorders and triples yeah. and shit. like they've got to have painted accessories uh i don't know i i ordered uh two of them i've got uh was it kirk and con i think uh-huh. uh coming from big bad when uh, sometime this summer I'm honestly surprised they didn't do a couple from Picard because Picard, I mean, Discovery is, it's fine, but Picard seems like that's been kind of their new hit. And so I, I think 
they wanted to hit different eras, you have to hit next generation. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to hit next generation, then you don't want Picard also. Like I kind of get what they're going for with the first wave. They they've got classic movie next generation, which is probably, I mean, I think that's the biggest star Trek. Oh, a hundred percent. I, I, I think it's got to be. And then, you know, modern stuff, just you know, obligatory, honestly, yeah. to have the modern stuff in there because that's behind a paywall. Kids aren't even watching modern Star Trek because it's rated R. So, mm-hmm. uh, but for the kids, there's a Star Trek prodigy line, which is the like kid oriented animated show. Uh, these look awesome. These are great toys. I think this is the kind of thing that could get kids involved and interested in at least this aspect of Star Trek, but they don't appear to mesh with the other line. Yeah, I saw those. They're real cartoony. They yeah, I mean, look they look like, great. They look they yeah. look like Ninja Turtles or something. Yeah, I haven't watched Prodigy at all. So. No, I haven't either. I, I'm not even caught up. I'm not caught up on anything. I, we watched the first few. Per, uh, per cards first few picards uh i want to go back and and try discovery again because i think if i can watch a few at a time i'll be able to get into the groove of it a little better and appreciate it, it. And, and that's what i've heard so i mean i'm i want to get back into them all but i mean classic trek is always going to be classic trek and next generation are always going to be my wheelhouse mm-hmm. but, but i you know i i'm excited that there are new toys coming and because of how toys work you know we're going to get at least a few waves of these things, so maybe they can crank out those Wrath of Khan figures before the line dies a sad death. Right, before nobody <laughs> orders them. Uh, and then finally, the last thing from Playmates Toys, and this was very interesting because there are two of these coming from different companies. Well, three, really. Uh, but Playmates is releasing a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin figure. So there's one coming from Neko that we'll get to late. Well, there are two coming from Neko. But Playmates is doing one as well. It's a previews exclusive. Uh, it's up for pre-order now from Big Bad or wherever you get your toys. Uh, and I really like this one because it scales with... It, it's that five, five inches is not a scale, it's a size. But whatever five inches is, I guess it would be one... Fourteenth. Fourteenth? Exactly. Is that yeah. right? One fourteenth? Okay. Uh, so it's that scale... Uh, the figure looks great. It looks like a toy as opposed to NECA's, which looks like a, mm-hmm. a you know, movable statue, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I ordered one of these just because I want to get it in hand and check it out. And because, you know, I mentioned wishing that they would do a Masters of the Universe Origins style Ninja Turtles line. And that's essentially what this looks like, except it's a new character that's never been made before. That's it. And what is is the last Ronin? Oh, it's a comic book. Okay. Yeah, it's IDW. It's it started off as you didn't know which turtle it was. It's the last surviving turtle. Uh, okay, and you don't know who it is because he has all of their weapons, one of Leo's broken swords, and apparently the story is just fantastic. Uh, so I, it's it's something I want to check out, but time time isn't what it used to be. Nope, it is not. I'm going to go with disenfranchised michelangelo uh, yeah i have no idea i don't and they they have revealed which turtle it is but i haven't pursued it at all because when i do get around to reading it i would like for it to be a surprise if that's at all possible still yeah. uh all right so let's move on because this one will be pretty quick and i'm curious to see if you saw this did you see boss fight studios other big announcement? Which one was it? The Zorro related one. Oh yes, I did see that. Dude, they are making a figure of Bunny Wigglesworth <laughs> yep. from Zorro the Gay Blade. <laughs> I love this movie. I, I was scrolling and like had to stop and like go back. And I was like, wait, oh. did I just see that? Like, well, that's when I first saw it, I was like Oh, it's a, it's just, I thought it was just a gold repaint because I thought there was no way they were actually making him. And then I saw the little handkerchief in his hand and I was Uh like, holy shit. (laughs) So it's a two pack 
of Zorro of Do- uh, Don Diego and Bunny Bunny Wigglesworth. So it's a regular Zorro <laughs> and the Gay Blade Zorro. And dude, I the the only problem is it's sixty bucks for the two pack, and they're four inch figures. Yeah, that's that's too much for my blood. I just I want a Bunny Wigglesworth. If if it was six inches. Mm-hmm. Here it is. I would be all over this. And then they've also got a two pack uh, from Mask of Zorro, which is, I mean, in modern times, probably the best known Zorro. That was the one with uh, Antonio Banderas and Catherine Zeta Jones. Uh, which, by the way, if you want to see Antonio Banderas having the time of his life on screen, go see Uncharted. Is it? I haven't seen it yet. It's good. <laughs> is it? Okay. It is. We had a blast. It's really fun. Because uh, I was debating going to see that or just going to see Moonfall again. <laughs> this this is how I felt afterwards. I didn't feel like I had just watched a video game movie. Which is the sign of a good video game movie. Right. It just felt like a really fun, action-packed movie. I would put it, it's below Indiana Jones, but above National Treasure. Okay. It, well, it's hard to get above National Treasure. Man, Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg have a great on-screen chemistry. Uh, and Tom Holland, very quickly you forget that he's Spider-Man. Oh, uh, that's good. because It is. Others have suffered from Right, that. right. Because that's all we know him as. So that was going to be a hard thing to cast off, but he does. Uh, it's It's good. I recommend it. I did see uh, Boss Fight is going to do Umbrella Academy, too. Yes, they announced. I think they announced that last year at Toy Fair. Yeah, uh, they uh, they announced uh, Wave 2 and announced the character. Okay, okay. Uh, and, they these, and, that's samples. Based, and that's based on the show, not the comic, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, and they, from what they've shown, they look really good. They, uh, they showed Cha-Cha and Diego and Klaus. Um, and they just sent a picture of Pogo and what he'll look like. Um, so, I, but again, they're one eighteen scale, and nothing I have matches that. So, well, and that's the thing I've had to get used to with with kind of the new one eighteen scale style because I love those Eagle Force figures mm-hmm. uh, that are coming from Fresh Monkey Fiction, which are essentially the same thing as these, but they're twenty six ninety nine each. Which is crazy, except that it's not because these are low run, independently created figures. These are not being produced in the thousands and shipped off to Walmart. Mm-hmm. So it's a whole different thing. But I, man, I just it's 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 hard to justify it as as much as I like. I know for a fact I'm going to end up ordering this Zorro the Gay Blade two pack. I can't not. Yeah. Uh, my mom took me to see that in the theater. We watched it on cable over and over again. I just, there's too much sentimental attachment to that, but that is part of justifying the price, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, but that, I mean, they look great. It's, it's, uh, like I said, it's a regular Zorro and then just golden smiling, bright white teeth, handkerchief, bull whip Zorro. Here's what I wish they had done though. Just do a bunny wiggles. Oh, and he's got the little pom poms going around his hat. Mm-hmm. Uh, just do a a bunny wiggles worth like six pack of all the different colors, like they did with the Batman of many colors. Oh, uh, that Deadpool pack they came out. Yeah, with. yeah, yeah. I mean, just do that. Uh, all right. Let's see. So that's that's amazing. I highly recommend all the listeners just look up Boss Fight Studios, Zorro the Gay Blade, and it's it's wonderful. All right. What do you want to hit next? We've got Mezco. We've got a couple things from Super 7 and McFarlane. Uh, uh, we, could, we could go ahead and get Hasbro out of the way. Let's get Mezco out of the way because Mezco won't take very long. Well, Mezco won't take very long because there are a couple of things that we're going to talk about next week on the new Audible Interlude podcast. So we we won't be covering them here. Yeah, let's let's knock Mezco out. Uh, so the two things we're not going to talk about here are Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow from their GI Joe 112 collective, which by the way, no figures from that have come out yet. Zero. And they previewed Firefly at San Diego Comic Con, and nothing else about him yet. 
That's right. We've only seen his head, right? Yeah. All they showed was his head. The same as that storm shadow. Right. Right. Head. Which you can't tell anything about, but we're going to speculate because that's what we do. Uh, but there's plenty of other stuff to talk about. Real quick, I want to get the... Uh, they do these MDS figures that are sort of mixed media. Uh, it's a wireframe body under a plush skin mm-hmm. with a big plastic rotocast head. And they're what they basically are is those Spencer Gifts horror dolls. Remember those? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're basically those, but nicer. Uh, they showed the creep from Creep Show. Looks awesome. I, I like these. And if it's a character that I'm particularly fond of, like we've got a Pennywise upstairs. And it's the creepiest shit ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the, they're cool. They're doing a great job with those. And then the five points figures, which I only have one of, I bought the glow in the dark Frankenstein that they put up for Halloween. I think it was last year. Mm-hmm. It's a cool little figure. I wouldn't mind having more five points figures, but it's not something I'm going to pre-order. Like when they come in stock, maybe I'll order a couple of or something. Like I want that universal monsters castle. Yeah. That looked really cool. And they showed Scooby-Doo. It's a set with the Scooby gang, the mystery machine, I think four villains, and then sort of a pop-up cardboard haunted house. Looked really cool. Uh, If the pricing is the same as the Universal Monster ones, uh, it'll be probably like 120 bucks right around there, I would imagine. Which isn't bad for all you get. No, no, not at all. It's like, I think it's like nine figures in the mystery machine and then the pop-up thing. I mean, it's, yep. it's yeah, that's solid. Uh, they showed two Silent Hill five points figures, which are weird because they kind of don't match the aesthetic because they've done Batman 66, Popeye, uh, Universal Monsters, um, Superman, and they all kind of are the same aesthetically. Like they're, they, each one matches the style, but they all kind of are a little cartoony looking. But then these Silent Hill ones are much more like gruesome and realistic. They, I feel like they don't like if you want to have a cool, it's not like the 112 collective stuff where you put the comic ones and the movie ones and the original ones all on the shelf together and they all match. Mm-hmm. The five points don't seem like they quite go together like that. Which would be funny because you could have the. I can't remember what her name is. Whatever the nurse's name is. The bubble head. bubblehead nurse or something like that. Uh, yeah. They could be hunting down the Scooby gang. Like that right, is a right. amusing scene. Well, but, but and, and at the same time, I think they probably don't want to totally copy uh, NECA's Toonie Terrors. Yeah. Yeah. These, I, I'm curious to see when somebody gets these in hand because the pictures of them, I mean, they look as good as a six inch figure does like the paint on them and all of it. And that crow, like well, I had to really look at that crow and be like, that is that small. Cause it looks great. Yeah. The crow, yeah. The crow also doesn't really match the aesthetic of the rest of them. So it's interesting that they're not trying to unify a style in this line. They, they are letting each property be its own thing, mm-hmm. which is probably smart. Uh, well, I don't know. You can go either way with it. But yeah, that crow looks phenomenal, and and so do the silent. Well, they all do. They all look every one of these, like even the Superman ones, because Superman's not really my guy. But they did them based off the old Fleischer animation with the big robot. That set looked awesome. Like I was so tempted to get it. So g- cool stuff coming from Mezco there. Oh, and they did uh, the Adams Family as well, but it was based on the new movie, which is which is good. But if they had done them strictly based off the comic strip, I would have bought them. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we move on to what is, in my personal opinion, the greatest action figure line of all time. Mezco's 112 Collective. Uh, Not a ton. I think the least shocking thing they revealed was uh, the Batman. Yeah. (laughs) Or the, the, the Patman. Yeah. Everybody knew that thing was coming. Yeah. It looked, I mean, what we saw of it, and that, that was the other thing that was a little bit frustrating here, is all of these we just got two shots of, and that's it. No look at the accessories, no details, no live models, just two pictures. And that's one thing I hate. I mean, you know, say what you will about 
the companies revealing toys this way and it's easier for them. But I mean, one of the things that was really useful or interesting, I think, is when we were having live toy fair is Mezco would do those booth walkthroughs where they would let people walk through, you know, yes. and pick them up and move them and all sorts of stuff. And you really got to really see the toy. And these yeah, toys. now we're just getting like a splash panel. Yeah. But, it, I mean, it's enough to get excited about because this, you know, the Batman, it looks like Robert Pattinson's bat suit. So, whatever. Mm-hmm. But we also got to look at uh, this Atticus Doom, which is part of their Rumble Society. It's another original character. Looks awesome. It does. But but I, uh, for the price, I'm not buying original characters. I love that they're doing it. I think they're great. Every single one they've put out so far has been really, really cool. But, and if I was only collecting like 112 collective stuff, I'd probably buy them all. Uh But for this price, that's just not what I'm into. Yeah. Yeah. The Atticus, I really like, you can tell, I think, when they're not having to pay licensing fees. Yes. These things come with, that Atticus comes with like three crazy heads and tentacles and all sorts of awesome stuff yeah there there is definitely a difference in the amount of product you get when it's an original thing and they're not paying those licensing fees uh they showed so this this was and i i haven't we talked about it i haven't gone to look at online reaction i just haven't had time to they finally revealed robin you know they teased robin last year sometime and they revealed it is a Damian Wayne Robin, which I is what I wanted from 112. Uh, now, I am sure they will do other Robins, but if I was only going to be able to have one 112 Robin, this is the one I would want. Many people do not agree with me, Ryan Schweck. They do not. <laughs> or do they not? Uh- I mean, Damien, one, I don't know why people are surprised. Like, when they did the tease, that was clearly Damien's R. Like, he has kind of a different one. But to be fair, with it being Mezco Mm -hmm. and how they kind of stylize things, they could have been using that R for another Robin. Like, it, 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 it wasn't completely outlandish to think that was a possibility. But, but yeah. I mean, from going from years of saying we will not do Robin, this is the one they were going to do. And I am sure. Oh, did they gonna... say they weren't going to do Robin? Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, it's really? Been a, it's been a couple of years now, but way back when the line started, they said they would never do Robin. Oh, um, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, they said it just didn't fit in with what they were doing, I guess. Oh, pff, get out of here. And so, I mean, you know, the Damien figure, it looks great. I'm going to get it. Um, I think they will. Probably they'll do Red Hood and Nightwing, and that's the way I would want them. Like, yeah, I, I, well, I would lo- look. I with the way Mezco does things. Uh, granted, we'll be ten years from now. We'll be talking about the Dick Grayson figure, but I want Red Hood. I want Nightwing because I just thinking about what Mezco would do with those design wise is exciting, yeah. but. You know, I would also love to have, and we've talked about this on the show before, a companion Robin to the the Batman trilogy figure or whatever they did, where they do like a little kid Robin, a teenage Robin, and then like a just before he goes off to become Nightwing Robin. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I would be into that, man. That would be great. I've been kind of thinking through, because I've got the, like, which Batman do I display? Not ascending night. What's the middle one? Um, I can't remember. Yo, that is no wait. Ascending is the first one. Yeah. Is triumphant the last one? I think so. I can't remember what the middle one. Is. I don't remember what the middle one is either. But I, I mean, I've got fucking yeah. all of them over there. Too. <laughs> so I've been like, well, is this Robin go with it? I mean, I'm still going to get it. But well, and that's. And, and see, that's another place where Mezco gets me is I wasn't going to get some of these Batmans, but then they do the color variants uh-huh. and they that all black version of the old man Batman looked so fucking cool that I had to get it. Yeah. And that that's I love that kind of stuff from them. Like, how cool would it be if they did 
uh, well, even with this Damian Wayne Robin, they could do different versions of him. They could do how cool would it be if they did just straight up like assassin Damien? Yeah. With that all black costume yeah. you know, for a little while. That yes. Great. Uh, there, there's all kinds of cool things that could happen here. So I'm, I'm excited for Damian Wayne. I know a lot of people yeah. don't like the character, don't want this look, but it's going to look great on the shelf. Yeah. Those people are wrong. Damien. <laughs> awesome. uh, and then finally, this one, uh, well, we got two. Don't go to the big one. Well, do I mean, do we have two though? Well, Spider Man. Well, right, yeah. but it's it's well, spy, it's a well, we've got Spider Man and then the, the big box. Oh, and, right. So, oh, you know what? I forgot to put that in my notes because it came out after I made my first notes. Okay, yeah. so yeah, we've got Spider Man that very much looks like almost like a 60s. Yeah, it's a very Spider-Man. it's a very Ditko, and it's the picture they released is a comic book cover. It's uh, a, right, right, and it's the light blue. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it looks great, but I've got a Spider Man. Yeah, I really cool. like it because it's like a teenage body, so it's like a you know I like that younger kid Spider Man. Yeah look because it just makes him stand out a little more from all the other superheroes on your shelf Mm -hmm. but i mean this one looks good i'm sure he's going to come with different eyes yeah uh i'm curious to see whether what other accessories he might come with but it didn't it didn't set my world on fire exactly yeah it's one i don't it's not like the superman where like i feel this need to replace my old Superman. Uh, right 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 Like, would I like to have the light blue more than the dark blue I have? Yeah, but not enough to pay $100. Well, and I guess here's the question then, because this is something that's come up a couple of times with 112. Can you sell the one you've got right now to fund the one that's coming out, which is what I did with the comic book Superman that I had to pay for the Christopher Reeve Superman? Yeah, you probably could, but I get real lazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, like I, I, I think about <laughs> it, and then I'm like, oh, I got to take it down and pack it up. And, well, and plus, if you make too much on eBay now, you're going to get taxed. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be filling out a W-9 or whatever it is. Um, So, I mean, the Spider-Man looks great, and I'm sure it'll be a great figure. Mm-hmm. But it I mean, hopefully they'll fix. I mean, some of the articulation on the old one is not – They've gotten better at articulation, but I haven't had anything that I've wanted to do with him that I haven't been able to do. Well, so. the ankle, the ankles are the biggest problem. Yeah. The if if Mezco can figure ankles out, that would be great. Yeah. But nobody can totally figure ankles out. Like even Marvel Legends, you can't get Spider Man into a real squat. Mm-mm. You just can't because I don't know how you would even make ankles that do that without them looking shitty right you end up in the old toy biz problem where they've got these cuts and all that stuff or or the like japanese style where it's the ball joint that's Mm. so visible and i don't want that so uh and then in the background of the spider-man shot is green goblin and it basically looks like toy biz's famous covers green goblin (laughs) When you said that, I was like, yeah, that is exactly what it looks like. <laughs> and they didn't really say anything about it. They just kind of put the picture out. I, surely that's not the one they're going to release. I'm trying to think if they've done that before where they have. Yes, they have. Uh, okay. One of the toy fairs. They had a big giant setup. Oh yeah, yeah, and they had made some kind of like troop builders, mm-hmm. but they've never been released as figures. But they looked—I think they did Hydra agents. Is that what it was? Uh, but yeah, that they was something that like they looked good enough mm-hmm. that you were like, "Oh wow, are they releasing these too?" But they were just things that they had put together for this display. Yeah, I don't it's know. Wild. Like, the goblin, I I don't know. The chest looks cheap. I mean, yeah, they may is. they may change that if it does come out. But well, my first thought was, is this a two pack? Yeah. Since we're getting the the Batman and Two Face two pack, 
is this the same kind of thing? Mm-hmm. But uh, it it doesn't. I don't know. They didn't say anything about it. I guess we'll find out more someday. All right. Let me find uh, the main event here of mm-hmm. Mezco. Anyway, talk about teasing something years ago. Did they? Yeah. So, oh my god, it's probably been three years now. So, yeah, I think it was it was three. They did, I think, for one of the Mezco cons, they had like a, it was a teaser image they put out. And one of the things people noticed, it was like, had it was for the, oh, I don't remember what it was. It was when Street Gomez came out. And Oh, was on, it the manhole cover? Yep. There was the hand, the turtle hand coming out. Okay, like okay. Pizza, and people were like, they're going to do the turtles. And then nothing's ever been said about it until yesterday well two days ago. dude this like i don't even know how to respond to this because i i collect lots of ninja turtles i'm buying the super sevens uh i'm buying NECA's movie turtles um i i turtles are one of my like i love ninja turtles and we'll get to more ninja turtle stuff later but 112 Collective Ninja Turtles, I, I can't not get them. There's no way I can not buy these. And looking at them, they are what Mezco does best. They're a combination mm-hmm. of kind of the best because they look like the Mirage Turtles, but they have the detailing of the movie Turtles and they have the color bandanas or the color masks. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh, dude. I So, of course, the internet did its thing. and lightened up the picture that they put out because if you look at it you know they have this kind of dark cityscape um and you can see in the lightened picture on leonardo there is an ab crunch you can see between the front shell and the I guess it's a French shell. I don't know what you call that. There's probably some biological term for that. <laughs> but it's shell in the chest. And so if there is an ab crunch there, that means that this front shell has to be soft somehow. Well, and I would imagine it is. Like my thought, because that's essentially, it's similar to what Super 7 has done. Mm-hmm. The, front, the, the front shell is a soft piece and there's articulation behind it. Now it doesn't, it's not like a full ab crunch, mm-hmm. but I could see Super 7 with this front shell piece almost being like a, a leather type mm-hmm. thing. Well, I know we had said, like, that's what I'm going to want out of 112 turtles. Like, I want the, I don't think the bandanas need to be cloth, but like, I want the elbow pads and the stuff to be like a leather or some sort of material. I, I think there'll be some kind of soft goods and they'll mm-hmm. be concealing all of the articulation. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, these just look incredible. Just this the, the image of them on the rooftop. The only thing though, that bothers me and I shouldn't care, but this has always been one of my pet peeves because I fell in love with the comic book turtles first is they don't have tails. Oh yeah, they don't. I didn't even notice that. They and do they, need their little tails. They they should have tails, but we'll we'll see. Yeah. Because the first images of the 112 Ghostbusters didn't have the tubes on their legs. Mm-hmm. But then when they came out, they had them. My so guess th- this is, is early on. I'm guessing it's gonna be a four-pack. I wouldn't be surprised if we get alternate heads that have all red. I that's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that I notice is that because they don't always do this when they're doing sort of classic looking turtles, they are all different colors. Like their mm-hmm. their flesh tone are all different colors. Uh, the front shell has different markings on each of them. I mean these these are going to be as much as I love my Super Seven turtles, and I think they're the best Ninja Turtles ever. These are going to be the best Ninja Turtle figures ever made. Oh, I'm sure they are. And then uh, the and blue Splinter. Got... And <laughs> I, I want to see a 112 Shredder. I bet if they do a Shredder, it will be. Amazing. I can't even imagine. 
I'd be so killer. But at this, I mean, this is whenever this gets offered, I'm I'm in. I've got to yeah. get it. And I don't I don't know what pre-orders I'm gonna cancel or what toys I'm gonna sell, <laughs> but I gotta have 112 collective ninja turtles. That's just how it is. Uh all right. Let's see here. So that's Mezco. Real quick, we can talk about uh, McFarlane toys. So McFarlane is not doing their, I think they call it their winter collecting event or something. That's going to be next weekend. So they haven't shown everything that's coming. Um, You know, they revealed that flash figure today, which, you know. Well, but it's cool because... It's fine. One, it lets you know they're still doing the CW stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, you want, if you're a fan of the Flash show, you probably want that costume. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's this, cool. I'm hoping just a, some, I want some Peacemaker toys at the Winter Showcase. I, You know what? Th- this is so frustrating to me. So we watch, we're watching the finale of Peacemaker, and I want figures of all of those characters so bad but mm-hmm. i don't want the mcfarland figures i agree i don't i just they're doing some wonderful stuff i don't like the scale i don't like their ankles and their wrists mm-hmm. because they're those ball joint things and i don't know why i don't know what the problem is and we'll get into this a little bit more in a second mcfarland can't do likenesses for shit they really can't they're those new, so bad. Those new Batman figures are horrendous. I, I don't ones. I don't understand what they're doing. And what's so infuriating about it is they're doing completely separate figures of masked and unmasked. Mm-hmm. So you're basically having to pay a premium to get this shitty likeness. <laughs> I don't get it. And and so to to segue right into shitty likenesses, Ryan, let's talk about an action figure line that a lot of nerds have been dying for for years. And we've gotten figures here and there, but we've never gotten a comprehensive line. Let's talk about these Princess Bride figures and how horrendous they look. (laughs) Dude, Andre the Giant looks like Pink Shrek with an afro. It's one of the worst. This... McFarlane's Andre the Giant looks worse than the Mego Andre the Giant. And they were so excited by him. Like, it was like this big like announcement. Look what we're doing. This and- is what's insane to me. So toy toy collectors, we're a bunch of fickle, finicky mm-hmm. assholes. We mm-hmm. all are. We all have different standards. We all have. So it's it's insane to me that I can go into like a WWE figure forum and somebody's furious that like the third stripe on Seth Rollins trunks isn't in the right place, (laughs) but then you go somewhere else and people think these princess bride figures look incredible. Like it's bizarre what we choose to, to, to have a problem with or enjoy, but these just look like, ass they really do they're so bad and i i I don't know i didn't know what to say i I, it's andre the giant i just it's got a weird like homer simpson-esque yeah what is that (laughs) like i guess i missed when he had that (laughs) and the the cloak because they've done this will be the second because they what they announced was princess bride wave two which is wedding buttercup the zini Bloody Wesley, Bloody Inigo, and Fezzik in the cloak. Fezzik's cloak, not even right. <laughs> the cloak he wears covers him entirely, and what they've got here looks like Cobgoblin's fucking cape, uh, but black. These are They're just not good. You know what would have been perfect and awesome and wonderful for these if NECA was doing them in their 8-inch clothed figure line? Yes, those would have looked. Dude. Oh my gosh, those would have been incredible. Amazing. I yeah, I'm looking at this uh 
<laughs> well, you know what I never realized? I always thought his name was Wesley. It's Westley. It is. It's Westley. I didn't. Uh, I didn't know that. I didn't know it until like a few years into to watching it. Like, because I, I remember watching it at one point, being like, "Wait a minute, is she saying Westley?" That and she is. Blows my mind. I never knew that. <laughs> huh. Yeah. So yeah, okay. those look terrible. Uh, but something that doesn't look terrible, but that I have zero need for the retro Batman figures. I bought all of the figures, toy company, Batman 66 figures, the like Mego style, but they're not Mego. They're like the sculpts are really, really nice. And the costumes are like deluxe. They're, they're kind of like NECA's eight inch scale stuff. Like mm -hmm. they look incredible. And these, like, these look really good, but I just don't need them. And who knows how far they're going to get into the line because how many times now have different toy companies started a Batman 66 line, gotten so far, and then just never make anything again? Yeah. I, it always just stops. <laughs> and they all do the same shit. Surfing Batman, surfing Joker, Catwoman, Penguin, Riddler, like, yeah. How many times over are we going to buy these things, hoping that they make it to deep cut characters, which is why I like the figures toy company one so much, because they got to bookworm, mm -hmm. they got to Shane, they got to King Tut, like they made everybody, dude, they got, they made O'Hara in Gordon, mm -hmm. like they got to everyone and they look fantastic. And all of these, Mezco has done these, uh, Funko did these, now McFarland is doing them. And they're this weird six-inch scale, but with less articulation than the Mattels. Yeah, Mattel did them. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, it's Mattel's very odd. the one I still have. And, just... and if you've got those, then that's and that's the only problem with the figures ones that I've got is there's no Batmobile. Mattel did one, I thought. Mattel did, Mattel did a Batmobile. Yeah. Um, and McFarlane has done a Batmobile. Funko did the Batmobile. Funko did the Batmobile. I wish so bad I bought this. Because uh, this was back when Funko was doing... Uh, or no, it wasn't Reaction. It was after Reaction went back to Super 7. And Funko was doing more articulated mm -hmm. three and three quarter inch figures. Yeah. And they did the Batmobile. It was a Batmobile and Batman and Robin set. And they did it in a bunch of different colors. And they did like a Japanese Batmobile that was like red. It was so cool. And I, I saw it at a convention once for a pretty good price and I should have bought it. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I, it's a weird thing to keep going back to again and again. Well, I, I mean, I get it. It's very popular. It's a lot of people's touchstone for Batman. Mm -hmm. They look great on the shelf when you run into them. Yeah, like, I mean, the these look... And I, this is some of the best stuff McFarlane is doing, I think. Mm -hmm. But, my gosh, I just, when they did the Batcave, they've, they've done a Batmobile. Like, they, they really are doing a great job with it. But, my gosh enough yeah. yeah and they're doing the same thing where they're doing a separate figure for unmasked batman masked mm -hmm. batman boxing glove batman whatever yeah, put out some ultimate figures i would love okay now that's that is how and this is a good segue for our next company that is the next Batman 66 that I would buy if Super 7 did Ultimates. Yeah. I'd be that all over get, that. That might get me. Uh, so Super 7, not a ton. And, and these were just kind of things that came out around this time. I don't think they were specifically doing Toy Fair stuff. Uh, they announced Papa Emeritus 2, uh, the next ghost figure. I got the first one. It, it was one of my top figures of last year. This one has the suit and the Pope get up. It looks great. I didn't think I'd buy another ghost figure unless they did uh, 
the ghouls or um, Cardinal Copia. Mm-hmm. But this one looks so good, and the fact that it's got the suit and the bald head with the sunglasses, I, I I'm gonna get it. It looks great. Mm. I'm, I'm a sucker. Uh, they showed also some Disney reaction figures, but what was weird to me was it's brave little Taylor Mickey, but then it's goofy Donald and Pluto from other things. Like it doesn't feel like a wave that goes together. I'm looking at my other there. Oh yeah, I did see. Uh, yeah. Like, why not do to to kick these off at least? Do a wave from the same source. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the Mickey doesn't fit. Like even right. the 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 style i guess doesn't fit with the rest of them yeah it's it's a weird and i I know they love brave little taylor because that's the the giant like 24 Mm -hmm. inch mickey that they made but it was just an odd decision to me because i mean when you're doing a wave especially a first wave i would think you want it to be something that a consumer is going to look at and be like oh those all go together i have to have all of them i gotta get all i gotta order the set right and, and shy of putting a Build-A-Figure in there, the way to do it is to make them all from the same source material. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was a weird call. But, I mean, they look great. I love the idea of Disney reaction figures because I'm not buying the Disney Ultimates. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious to see where else they go with these. Uh, and then, finally, the worst Ultimates, which, again, I love the worst. I've got a bunch of the worst reaction figures but uh, for the price point i'm just not spending 55 dollars yeah i mean look they're worth it they look nice they look fantastic robot reaper Mm -hmm. looks amazing Mm -hmm. but i there's just too much other stuff i'm getting for me to justify plunking 55 bucks down for these yeah yeah like the captain dead star i mean looks wonderful but yeah like you said 55 is too much when i got other bus stuff to buy it's well and and that's the thing is the commitment to like well if i have to make a choice between this original character that i have no emotional attachment to Mm. or another ninja turtle i'm gonna buy another ninja turtle yep yeah i'm gonna complete that ninja turtle set all right, so uh, real quick, Haya Toys. How familiar are you with Haya Toys? I have never heard of them. Okay, they make a lot of licensed three and three quarter inch figures. Mm-hmm. They've done Aliens. They did the APC from Aliens, the big vehicle, mm-hmm. and it looks incredible. Like I almost bought this thing. It looks so good. Uh, they're branching out into one twelfth scale. They're doing Rambo and RoboCop, uh, and they're they're doing one eighteenth scale, which is their wheelhouse. Judge Dredd, which is cool. Mm-hmm. And then they announced Godzilla. I don't know what scale it's going to be. I don't know what they're going to do with it. Uh, and then they also announced GI Joe. But again, we'll talk about that on Audible Interlude next week. But I've seen their figures in person and they don't blow me away. Do they, where do they sell them? Are they in like target? You can get, no, you can get them from their, their, uh, their Chinese company. Mm -hmm. You can get them from previews, like your local comic shop. Mm -hmm. You can order them from big bad toy store. Uh, but I, I don't know. Like, I appreciate, they're almost like G.I. Joe 25th anniversary style articulation. Okay. But the paint 
doesn't look great. The sculpt, I, I don't know. They don't they don't look like bootlegs, but they don't look like twenty five dollar action figures. <laughs> they they look like a company in China got some licenses. <laughs> they're, pretty, they're right, right. That's mess. what they look like. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know. It's it's something that I thought was worth mentioning, but I don't have any investment or or really excitement uh, for, for them. It's just something that they they had some announcements that uh, were worth mentioning. Uh, all right, let's see here. One last, just brief one before we get to NECA. I want to mention Jada Toys. Uh, now, they're best known for diecast stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, they've done a lot of the, like, when you go into Walmart and you see the boxed, uh, like, Batmobiles, little diecast ones that come with the little figure. Mm-hmm. That's Jada Toys. But they also recently launched a line of six inch super articulated Universal Monsters. Uh, I got the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, you did get them. There were ones I went back and forth whether I was going to get Dude, them. Dude, it's fantastic. I can't believe this is. And for the listeners, I'm I'm holding it up to the camera, <laughs> so it does you guys no good. But I can't believe this figure is a company's first six inch super articulated figure. Well, because even the initial pictures like looked a little sketchy. <laughs> like, dude, this is. It's fantastic. All of the articulation works great. The sculpt is great. The paint is great. This is a this is an amazing figure. And I really, if it wasn't for NECA doing their line of uni- Universal Monsters, I would be getting these. Uh, but I just don't, because I've, I've got the creature from the Black Lagoon, because that's my guy. I'll buy any Gilman mm-hmm. figure that comes out pretty much. I even bought that overpriced fucking bendy the fifth fi- who sells fifteen dollar bendies uh so jada toys uh they've they've produced the creature frankenstein the bride and dracula and then this week they revealed the wolfman and the invisible man and they come with tons of accessories the invisible man comes with a bandaged head and a head that's being like unwrapped like it has a bandage sticking out from it and it's got empty space in between the bandages mm-hmm. looks phenomenal. Uh, and then the wolf man like these, if you're a monster fan, I think you have to get these figures. They're, they're probably the best and they scale with uh, like GI Joe classified Marvel legends. Like that's what they scale with. So yeah, it's kind of why I want that Dracula because that's what I want my Dracula to look like in Marvel. Yeah, yeah, he's he he. They're great. They're awesome figures. Uh, and this is the reason I bring this up. Well, one because you you guys listeners, you should check out the Wolfman and Invisible Man that they showed. Uh, but this is the company that I wish would get DC. Mm-hmm. If they were making DC figures like this. I would be all in in a second. Yeah, I don't think McFarland is letting go of. No, no, there's no way because I mean, looking at the way McFarland is flooding the market with these things, they're making bank. Yeah, they're claiming they outsold Hasbro. Well, and they probably did because they were actually on pegs all year long. Yeah, probably. Uh, so yeah, I'm sh- I'm sure DC Multiverse is the biggest toy line of 2021. There's no doubt in my mind that that's a fact. I mean, what what are they what were they competing against? The Eternals? <laughs> really? Oh, Eternals. Oh, Eternals. Jeez. All right, let's uh take a oh, they have little knee joints too. Huh. Okay, so we've got Hasbro and NECA. I guess we should probably close this thing out with NECA. Let's go ahead and hit Hasbro. Oh, so yes. you're you're going to have to field, field this one for the most part. But I will say this real quick. Uh, Indiana Jones in 2023. Yep. 
gotta be okay. So here's here's my concern. Indiana Jones, personally, I feel needs to be scaled with Star Wars Black Series because Black Series and Marvel Legends are two different scales. Yeah, pretty much. They do not mix. Black Series is smaller than Marvel Legends. Uh, and I didn't even realize this until I tried to put a Hela, 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 whatever, head on uh, the female Inquisitor body. Mm-hmm. And I was like, holy shit. These are two different scales entirely. Uh Um, So I want Indiana Jones to match Black Series, not Marvel Legends. I assume they will because the MCU figures tend to scale a little smaller, too. So, yeah. And you know what? That's something I haven't checked. Do those do those match up with Black Series? Much better. They're not exact, but they they match a lot better than the comic book legends do but then that but then here's something that sucks is the gi joe classified scales with marvel legends Mm -hmm. and i would love to have a gi joe classified scale indiana jones i don't know why i wish everything that was 112th scale was 112th scale right (laughs) but mezco mezco is the only one doing true 112th scale all right they Marvel Legends and Black Series, they just do six inch ish. Right. And then that's what scale. it is. Yeah, they're just ish. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that Indiana Jones next year. We don't know what it's gonna be. I look, I would love to see Indiana Jones vintage collection, Indiana Jones, you know, whatever they want to call Black Series version, which I'm sure I am one hundred percent positive we'll see a six inch Indiana Jones. Oh, 100%. There's no hope way they, they won't do that. I'd like to see them put them on retro cards, like those old Indiana Jones figures that came out. Well, here's the thing, is they can do both. Mm-hmm. And and judging from how they've handled things, I think there's a good chance we'll see a baseline that's packaged you know, in boxes, probably more similar to the Fortnite stuff than... than uh, the black series because they're trying to eliminate plastic and everything mm-hmm. but we'll probably see a boxed mainline and then we'll see a retailer exclusive probably walmart unfortunately carded retro line mm-hmm. that's my that's my like main guess for indiana jones but we don't know anything yet yeah um yeah hasbro oh, hasbro so hasbro broke theirs up into these individual fan events and the gi joe one has not happened yet that is uh thursday Mm -hmm. and i will be struggling to uh, normally uh if you follow audible interlude podcast on instagram usually i'm on top of these things and posting pictures before the event is even done uh i will be at work thursday so I'm going to do my best to watch it, but I'm probably not even going to be able to do that. But we will be thoroughly discussing everything revealed on Audible Interlude next week. Um, Let's start with Marvel. (laughs) So, you know, Marvel, they are... They're catching up from the Eternals fiasco. (laughs) They're finally clear. Well... There was the Eternals fiasco, but before that, and, and I hate to say it because this is now one of my top five Marvel movies, but before that, the Shang-Chi fiasco. Yep. <laughs> because those things were keeping pegs warm too. Yep. Um, and so they have they have done several waves. They seem to be trying to catch up. So they did the Doctor Strange 2 wave, um, which I've seen on the shelves a few times now. Um, So so here's (laughs) that you're talking about the multiverse of madness wave. Yep. I this is all I've seen in the there are six targets in my like circuit. All I've seen is America, and they have like eight of her. Yeah, they seem to have packed her heavy is what it looks like well okay so i read earlier that 
and I don't know if this is every retailer, but that now what Marvel is doing and or what Hasbro is doing, and this is why the Eternals looked the way it looked, is each character comes in a case of six. No yeah. more, no more mixed cases. It depends on the store and who does it. So Target seems to be buying solid case packs. Um, Walmart seems to be getting mixed case packs. Of okay. At least Multiverse of Madness. Okay, so that explains why Target, with these new retro Spider-Man figures, I see like yep. six symbiotes, six shockers. But then at Walmart the other day, they had... Shocker, Ben Riley, Symbiote, Spider Man, and Hobgoblin, or whatever. Yep, that's very interesting. Yeah, so that's how they're ordering them. Um, so Hasbro, you know, started off the <laughs> toy fair season by raising prices again. Yeah, they sure did. <laughs> which, which, let's just point this out. At the end of 2021. We were just starting to see twenty one ninety nine figures. Mm-hmm. The beginning of twenty twenty two, everything was twenty two ninety nine, and now we're in February, and all of the new pre orders twenty four ninety nine. It is a tough pill to swallow, and a lot of these are absolutely not twenty five dollar action figures. They are not. And so I, I'm curious to see how it affects things. Um, so the first one they released, I guess this has been two weeks now, but they announced the new X-Men wave, um, which we'd seen pieces of before with Wolverine and Sabretooth and Maggot and Siren. Who's the other one in that one? It's the Bonebreaker wave. Um, which which I, I, the Reavers are like some of my favorite villains of all time. So even though these were twenty two ninety nine each, I fucking ordered the whole wave except for Wolverine, who does not come with a build a figure piece. Yep. I like Although I re- that Wolverine looks great. It does, except it's got those stupid hot claws, which I never liked. Oh yeah, that is dumb. I don't like that, that at a, all. That was a weird one. But if they're like if they're like the claws from the more recent Wolverine figures, you might be able to pop them out and put regular claws in. Yeah, you should be able to. Um so they released, they announced those, and then yesterday was like, yeah, yesterday, yeah, yesterday, they announced the collector wave, which the is the controller, figure. the controller, not the collector. Whoever, whoever the fuck that is, he's an Iron guy, Man villain, guy who's shaped like Thanos, yeah, and who is basically the Thanos body with a new head on it. It is <laughs> right. One of the cheapest build figures they've ever done. And the collector, <laughs> or the controller, the controller's fine. He's been back in the comics recently, but not one fans were clamoring for. <laughs> um, so they did another Iron Man, which, good Lord, I just, you know, it's based on Alex Ross. But, but he's pinless. He is pinless. Uh, but does it come with a build a figure part? So... Don't get it if you don't have to. Um, they did Madam Hydra, which is a huge that that one. They okay. What well, here's here's my question. Okay, wait, hang on, hang on, because this this is the thing that we do. Hang on, just a second. Mm-hmm. you're gonna go get bad Madam Hydra. She's terrible. Okay, that was super exciting for the listeners. I got up to go grab my Madam Hydra figure because she was one of the earlier Hasbro's. She is, and she was a, a running change with Madam Mask when they were doing that right. for a little while. And I've got both of them, and I remember, I can't remember which one I found easily, but I figured I would just never find the other one. Where the hell is... I've got a whole villain shelf here, and I don't see her. So, but yeah, they did... Early Hasbro days, they did a Madam Hydra, and I got her just because back then the figures weren't $25 each. 
and looking at the new one, clearly like it's a nice looking figure, but I'm like, do I need to upgrade this Madam Hydra? And now I'm now I'm wondering if I even still have her. Look, here she is. Oh, I'm terrible. Oh, it is. Is <laughs> oh gosh, she's got the bad hip joints. <laughs> she's got oh. bad hair paint. Let's see. Oh man, yeah. I guess I guess she is worth an upgrade, isn't she? I mean, she is not good. Oh, that face is terrible. Uh huh. Jeez, she was uh on what I like to call my lower shelves of shame. It's the bottom, <laughs> it's the bottom shelf of my detail well, where I'm like, you I, can just go down here. I think I might have even just packed her up because I don't. I'm I'm looking at my shelves right now, and I do not see that figure. Yeah, she's she's rough. So she might be so bad. I just put her away, but I have no real attachment to that character. So for twenty five bucks. That's a that's a pass for me, but I will say if you are a fan of Madam Hydra, I think this is an update that you need. Yeah, yeah. Um, they did another updated U.S. agent, which looks great. Uh, it does look to, great. They need to redo him. But I don't care. Like I bought the MCU U.S. Yeah. agent figure. I don't care about the comic book U.S. agent. That's just that's my personal fandom. I don't need this guy for twenty five bucks. Now, if he was twenty. Yeah, I'd probably be like, you know what? He looks cool. I'll get him. Um, they did Speedball, which I'm super excited about. Speedball looks awesome. Yeah, he's got those the hair, the, the deco on his weird orange parts. Mm-hmm. I don't really understand why he has the butterfly shoulders, but that's yeah, fine. It's because um, they put him on. And that's, that's one of my kind of gripes about some of the figure companies is is some articulation makes the figure look less good. Mm -hmm. So don't put it in just because it's like anything that has toe joints. Yeah. Like uh, Mattel is doing these WWE ultimate figures and they all have the toe joints, like the old toy biz figures. Those are worthless and they look stupid. They really do. Just (laughs) don't even, don't even do that. Oh, let's see. Who else did we get? We got Blue Mar- Explain Blue Marvel to me. I don't know who oh, this is. Adam Bashir. Um, I like Blue Marvel. He's uh, been in the Ultimates, um, and he was an Alpha now, Flight. Now the, now the post-Ultimatum yeah. Ultimates, right? Yeah, with Black okay. Panther and Monica Rambeau and a bunch of people. Okay. Um, I'm a big fan of his character, and he's one we've been kind of waiting for them to do. So I The figure excited. looks great, but I had no idea who he was. Yeah, I'm glad they're doing him. Okay. They're doing the Thor, the Herald of Galactus Thor. For okay, America. why does this Thor have Bert from Sesame Street eyebrows? <laughs> so that's his tiara. Um, what? Yeah, that's a when he uh, he became the Herald of Galactus for a little while, and that's okay. why he's got like the energy hammer, and it comes with the ravens. Um, and I really do think they did that because they're putting out Galactus. Um, oh yeah okay they've had coats talking about that he wanted that figure and he looks fine i don't his face looks like the watcher though Mm -hmm. yeah he's got the blanked out pupils and stuff yeah yeah, i don't he's weird and it's not a very long story (coughs) excuse me um so i was kind of surprised by that and then they did the i like how they did quick so well and that's another one i've got the old maria hill figure Yep. That I'm sure if I went and looked at right now, I'd be like, oh, shit, I could really use an update. Yeah, it's not. It's built on that old female buck. That's right. Well, I think good. it's the same one as the, the Madam Hydra you just showed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm super excited about Quake. I'm a big fan of Quake. Um, and I like that they did the interchangeable parts. So you could make her Maria Hill. If you've got blonde hair, you can make her Agent Carter. Um, I imagine that's going to be a harder one to find. Um, and then, yeah, because people are going to be buying at least two of her, if right. not three, if they have the old Agent Carter figure. Well, and you know, with all these different heads too, if you've got Mary Jane heads or Gwen, heads, oh sure, yeah, throw them on there and have a just a bunch of female Shield agents. Yep. Yeah, I, that's yeah. I, so, so this is one where you hope. Target is going to be ordering cases mm-hmm. of six. Yep. And then the other big announcement they 
showed the retro rhino. Yes. That's going to come on the big card, which you've got the Kingpin. It's that Kingpin is one of the few figures I have still in the package. Cause I just couldn't bring myself to open that awesome card. That was, like, I can't open. I got the gray Hulk mm-hmm. and I can't bring myself to open it because it looks so badass on that giant blister card mm-hmm. as much as I would like that. Cause I've got the green Hulk that they did the same buck. And it's such an amazing giant, big figure. And I want that gray Hulk out, but he looks so killer on that giant card. Yeah, that giant card is great. And that rhino, that body on the rhino, the size of it, it's great. I mean, it's the old build a figure body. It's just got a new head. Um, well, and they filled in the shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. They the pi- the pins on the shoulders are gone. So mm-hmm. that's nice. Uh, yeah, this is a big, giant, chunky boy of a figure. Uh, and I mean, this is. I think most comic fans, this is the Rhino they want. Yeah. And I was excited, you know, uh, what's his name on the Marvel team? Ryan. Um, He always has kind of hints in the background. If you look at his shelves and there was a lizard sitting there. And so the rumor is there's going to be a build a figure or I guess a retro. Well, probably a retro. Yeah. Yeah. Because they've got, they've got to do a retro lizard a retro Dr. Octopus. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one more that I feel like, Oh, I, I feel like a, they haven't done a retro Craven. Have they? They haven't. Um, and then the other rumor for the retro is they're going to do a Smythe, which, Oh dude, I give me Ugh. a big ass box set of Smythe. Oh no, wait. Okay. Wait, I'm, I'm mixing my characters up. Who did the Spider Slayers? That was... He was there for it. Um, I can't remember. I want a Spider Slayer box set because it was there were different size robots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Smythe is, you know, the one from the cartoon that had those... And the those horns st- coming out of his shoulders. So gross. They're right? Like flesh looking. Yeah, really. Cr- I had oh. that figure because I, I was collecting all of those five inch toy biz figures uh-huh. back in the day. I loved those, man. I wish I still had them all. Yeah. So they, you know, Marvel, Marvel had a pretty good showing. Um, they did announce they're going to do the build a figure for the Disney plus wave two is going to be the ultimate Ultron or whatever you want to call it from that last episode of what if um, he looks fabulous. I don't, He's got those. the infinity stones in his chest. He's got the big, like, lance sword thing. Mm. Uh, now, this is just a render, but it looks awesome. And what if, okay, one, the what if series completely blew away my expectations for what they might do. Two, is being directly incorporated into the fucking MCU movies. <laughs> That's amazing they've done that. What is even happening? Dude, <laughs> Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. We are my are the the needless thing schedule as as everybody knows at this point has just been fucked for like 2 years now. We're doing the best we can. We have to do a review of Multiverse of Madness. At, at this point, you could tell me that Dom from Fast and Furious is showing up. And I'd be like, yep, probably makes sense. (laughs) The multiverse is family. (laughs) Exactly. Like there's nothing about that movie that I think is going to be surprising because everything is off the table. It's crazy. Well, I saw today they're talking about Howard the Duck being on Mm She-Hulk. All I want is a Howard the Duck series based on the Chip Zdarsky, Joe Quinones comic. Holy Mm -hmm. shit, dude. And that's basically what the Howard in the MCU looks like. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want that so bad. Okay. Uh, We got a couple more things uh, from Hasbro. Uh, The Future Foundation Stealth Suit Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, yeah. That looks awesome, except for the fucking pins in his elbows. I I don't understand if they've got this new pinless body. You guys, come on. And, That's and why you know I don't and own any of the Spider-Mans. I don't have the retro and a pizza Spidey. I skip them all because I know it's coming. And that's right. At some point, there's going to be a new retro Spidey, penless, beautiful, perfect. 
That's the Spidey I want. And But here's the thing. So they've got this stealth suit Spidey that looks awesome. It's a really cool design. I like it. I like the Future Foundation Spider-Man looks. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like... because. They could show us pictures of this that did not expose the pens. It's almost like they're saying, fuck you guys. Look at these shitty elbows. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) uh, I mean, it's it's, otherwise, it's a cool looking figure. I like it. Uh, I know Phantom Jr. is going to want it because he wants every Spider-Man figure that ever gets released. Uh, And then they, they also showed... Uh, from this, which this is a whole thing that I'm not getting into. These VHS animated X Men. I'm not buying them. I'd really like to see one in real life. I, look, I love them, and I think for for people who m- mainly know X Men from the animated series, this has got to be the greatest toy line of all time. Mm-hmm. And I love that they're doing it. I love that those fans are getting these figures because I know, like, I want Jubilee and Storm and Wolverine and all to look like the comics that I was reading when I was young. But, like, so many people just know those characters from the animated series. And I love that they're getting their versions of these characters. I think that's great. Yeah, that storm looks good. The the cell shading is a little odd on the legs, but for what it matches, you know, I've, the Venom looks really good in person with that cell, the shell shading stuff. Well, and I, I think that's the thing is that, like, by itself, it looks a little weird, but mm-hmm. when you have a whole shelf full of these, mm-hmm. they're going to look fucking incredible. Yeah, I, I'm curious to see what they do when they do Beast. That's the one I'm real interested in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wow. absolutely. So yeah, I mean, Marvel. Marvel had a good show. People are, you know, besides the price hike, <laughs> excited. Yeah. And I'll tell people if you shop around, you can still find them for twenty two ninety nine. Um, well, and that's the other thing is I, I, I tend to be an early adopter. I'm compulsive. I I have mm-hmm. FOMO real bad. But with these, I'm going to watch them and. You know what? Because if you look at Marvel Legends on Amazon, a lot of times they drop down to like 15, 12 bucks. Mm-hmm. And with these, if Speedball drops under 20, Madam Hydra, US Agent, like if those figures drop under 20, I'll grab them. Yeah. Best Buy has been dropping them like crazy and, lately. And, and that's what this price hike does for me is it's going to make me more patient. Yeah. I mean, shoot, you can find a bunch of them at Ross. I've been finding figures at Ross. Oh, dude, I keep forgetting to go to Ross because the older retro retro Spider-Man figures have been showing up there. Yeah, I haven't found the retros there, but I've been finding... uh, What did I find? I found some of the Deadpool wave. I found some of the Fix-It wave. Shoot, I got toys at City Trends the other day. I didn't even know that was a place. Dude, City Trends. So this this was a huge flare-up in the G.I. Joe community. Because all of those Cobra Island Target exclusive G.I. Joe classified figures Mm -hmm. were impossible to find. But that City Trends place, people were finding like 30 beachheads just stacked up in City Trends. I felt weird going in City Trends. (laughs) It's like, I don't even know what it is. I don't think we even have them here. It's like a weird discount clothing store. And then there's like, this one little pathetic shelf of toys. And I was like, Oh look, there's moon night. <laughs> it's like impossible to find anyway. <laughs> uh, all right. So this is it. We got to, we got to wrap it up. And I got to say, I mean, I don't think there's even any debate that NECA. Oh wait, we got to talk about more Hasbro. Thing. Oh, what do we got more Hasbro? What? We got to talk about damn star Wars. <laughs> oh, I don't even, I don't even know what happened with star Wars. Tell us about star Wars. Oh God! How <laughs> Hasbro is doing so well on one side and completely screwing up the other side. Oh, we're going to talk about Black Crescent, aren't we? Oh, he. We can start there, then go to the other ones. Let's start. So, let's start there. Dan, you mean uh, Black Chewbacca? <laughs> um, so they clearly knew that they wanted to get something out. 
And so they put out, you know, the Black Kersantan that is a straight Chewbacca body repaint. Because as we all know, this character has only existed for like a couple of weeks now, right? Uh, Well, what's messed up is they put it in the comic book box and they were like, it's the comic book version. Like, no, it's not. He's even bigger in the comic book. Right. (laughs) Like, I... I think it's very telling that that thing is not selling. It's not sold out. Like people are skipping it. They're mad. I can't imagine anybody actually buying that. Like, I, okay, well, that's not true because there are hardcore completists oh, yeah. who have to have one of everything. Those people are buying that figure, but anybody else is looking at that and going, wow, Hasbro is trying to put a giant sexual device in my butt right now against my will, and I'm not having it. I And I'm a huge fan of Black Saint. Like I from, am, too. I the got, comic books, dude, like... I don't collect Black Series, but I bought Dr. Aphra. Mm-hmm. I bought the droids, like, because I loved that series so much. And if there was a comics-accurate Black Chrysanthemum, I would buy it. But this is not that. It is not. And apparently it's the first of, I think they're going to do three additional comic book figures. They haven't said what yet, but they're they're doing more. So yeah, I skipped it. And then they, so they did their Star Wars, you know, whatever, Pulse, Con. Right, right. Whatever. Fan fan first Friday or whatever. the Rancor, you know, was obviously a huge failure and they screwed up big time <laughs> and they're not taught. They won't talk about it. And then, I mean, there's no reason they should really. Yeah. So they showed the dark trooper, which looks great. Um, he's like deluxe, the he's deluxe. deluxe. He's deluxe. He's like $35 coming to stores near you spring 2023. Dude, that's like that's like Mezco Super Seven times. That's that's not a pre-order. That's like the crowdfunding shit that Mezco and Super Seven do. Mm-hmm. And then they showed this new wave, and it's the client. So um, you know Herzog. Um, okay, you have to explain this to me because. People are finding this wave at retail as Hasbro is saying available spring 2023. Yep. What is happening? <laughs> Nobody knows what they're doing. That's the best part. Is that they they unveiled this like, oh, we're gonna show you our exciting wave coming next year. And then people are like, Yeah, I found that in Target last week. Well, and they had already, I know for a fact they had already shown the client because I had added. Werner Herzog action figure to my wants list. Mm -hmm. He, it leaked and they showed, I mean, it was like an official picture of it like three months ago. Right, right. Like I already knew that was happening. Mm -hmm. And we knew like they had shown some of them. So we knew the Ahsoka was coming. Um, They had showed Echo. They had showed Amiga. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew about all of these. They weren't like reveals. Yeah. And so this is the first time they'd officially like shown them together. But then, yeah, they were like coming in 2023. Uh, I don't know what Hasbro's doing. And they've had the same problem with this wave that just came out with Finnick and Bib Fortuna and all them, where Hasbro Pulse magically shipped these. So here's the, okay, so this, this is wild. Uh, Hasbro Pulse, first of all, and I know this is going to be a little bit of a controversial take, but if you're a toy collector and you're, you're a real toy collector and not some little weenie, you buy the premium pulse membership. Mm -hmm. And I know people have a problem with that, but here's why one pulse has eliminated the free shipping for mm-hmm. non-premium members two and i just read this today apparently prices are a dollar more for non-premium oh. members i didn't know that i didn't know that either i saw that earlier today and uh also if you're a premium member you get 
early access to back in stock items. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of January, I got the little, and look, you can't rely on the emails. You need to have that Hasbro Pulse app. Have the app, turn the notifications on, and you'll get that Hasbro Pulse back in stock notification. And that's how I got an Alley Viper, a Mm -hmm. Bat, and Boba Fett and Finnick Shand all in one shot. And people are losing their minds over the fact that they cannot get their hands on the Boba Fett and Finnick Shand or the Alley Viper and the Bat, although those are slightly more common, it seems. But I, I had no idea. I just happened to like get that notification, and I was like, well, shit, if I'm buying an Alley Viper and a Bat, I'll go ahead and order Boba Fett and Finnick Shand as well because I, I buy... I don't collect black series, but I do buy Mandalorian stuff in black series. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, shit, I'll go ahead and order those. Why not? I had no idea at the time that it was going to be this huge fucking deal and that nobody else was able to get these figures. I I mean, they've got Lando is clogging the pegs right now. (laughs) Every story. And I, I hate it because Lando is literally like one of the best characters in the history of Star Wars. But every time they make a Lando figure and he's look, Star Wars fans, I, I'm going to be blunt right here. You got to stop being fucking racists yeah. by the Lando figures. What is wrong with you? Well, and see, I think I, what I can't figure out is how they pack that Lando. Well, why are there every Walmart you go to has 10 general calrissians <laughs> yep. why like by the figure yeah i mean are we re- and granted we're in the south like maybe there are obstacles there that aren't present in other portions of the country but my gosh lando is the fucking coolest guy in all of star wars by all of his figures it's a great figure too it is a great figure the cape is wonderful it's a nice figure there's just whether it's general calrissian or skiff guard lando or just straight up cloud city lando like i want all of the lando figures Mm -hmm. i don't understand why every time they release a lando he warms the pegs (laughs) i just i don't know and well and they release part of their announcement you know they do their archive line and they're doing another they're doing another skip card lando (laughs) it's like he was around forever last time I appreciate they do the archive line. You know, they're going to. Uh, the archive line is great. Look, I, I, um, I, I think you got to do it to keep, I think to keep the black series going, you have to have something like the archive line, which is, is kind of similar to Marvel's retro line mm-hmm. because it's a way for new people to come in and get characters that they missed before. Like, yeah, you kind of have to have that. That's how I got, because I've got um, I've got a shelf of bounty hunters that is, first I have the Lego version, then I have the Galactic Heroes version, then I have the three and three quarter inch, then I have the Black Series, and then I have the 12 inch of all of the bounty hunters. And the only way I was able to get Bosk and IG-88 was in the archives. Uh, Dengar's were... and the next ones. Yeah, and that's... that's Oh, okay, so we got to talk about this, too. Today, out of fucking nowhere, Amazon-exclusive Bounty Hunter 2-pack of Dengar and IG-88. Oh, I did see that. The, of the retro figures. <laughs> no, no, like, preamble whatsoever, just... Hey, you better go order this right now if you're collecting the retro stuff, which I am because I, you know, it's funny. Okay, let me let me ask you this. This is something uh, we'll talk about it on Audible Interlude, but I, I would like to get a sort of outsider opinion. Have you seen the Super Seven Reaction GI Joes? Yes. Have you been tempted? What do you think of them? I think they look nice, dude. I. I've bought every one that I've seen. Yeah, I I had them in my hands. So I was like looking at them. They are so well. 
first of all, the packaging. I mean, this is what Super 7 does. The packaging is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. But the figures themselves, like, those are the G.I. Joes we grew up with in the cartoon Mm -hmm. and the comic book. Like, that's them. And there's something to be said, and it's the same thing with the Star Wars retro collection. Like, this is the shit we grew up with. And even though, like, I have a lot of old Kenner Star Wars figures, there's just something about the modern packaging and and getting that five points of articulation style figure again that I just like. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I saw that thing go up today and I was like, shit, I got to get it. Yeah, Star Wars. Well, and then the other big Star Wars thing, and I don't collect these, but you do, was the throne room playset, which reactions to this thing, you know, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend to check it out. This thing is, it's huge. It comes with fat bib for tuna, old fat tuna. I, so I talked about this thing on last week's episode in the intro, but I'll talk about it more now. I think they fucked up. Um, I, I don't want this giant archway. Uh-huh. I want the floor with the trap door. Uh-huh. I want the stairwell that Luke walks down that Boba and Fennec walk down. I, 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 I don't give a shit about the like kitchen behind Java, his, his barbecue area. No, I don't care about that at all, especially not for $230. I liked when they somebody brought up, you know, does it fit with the other piece that they No, made? it doesn't. <laughs> they were like, it's in the same style. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, it's insanity, dude. I've got, because I bought two of those Jabba's throne room like mm-hmm. sets that they made. Because those connect together so you can have one that has Han and Carbonite on the side and you can sort of flip it around and connect it and make the back part to go behind the existing vintage collection Jabba uh, and platform that Mm -hmm. came out like 10 years ago or whatever. So what the fuck are you doing releasing a Jabba's palace that doesn't connect with those pieces. Oh, and it, it doesn't even appear to have the same aesthetic qualities. It doesn't. I don't know what Hasbro is doing with Star Wars right now. And and look, I'm your vintage collection guy. I'm your guy that bought the sail barge, that bought the Razor Crest, that's still buying. I fucking bought a Lobot the other day. <laughs> I already had a Lobot. But I needed a new Lobot because this one is better. I am your like total sucker vintage collection fan. And I saw that, excuse me, Boba Fett's throne room. Right. And I was like, fuck that shit. It's (laughs) It's not. It's it's I would pay two hundred and thirty dollars for the exact same thing done correctly. Mm -hmm. But for me. That set was made for toy photographers and not for toy collectors. I agree. That's why it comes with all the crap. That's right. Right. Yeah. You can. Like- I don't need a bunch of pots and cups and shit. <laughs> I need a floor with a trap door and a stairwell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not as as much as I love. Look, I spent three hundred and fifty fucking dollars on a razor crest. I spent five hundred dollars on a sail barge. I'm not spending $230 on that because I've already got the Walmart exclusive Jabba's Deus or whatever the heck it is. And then there, I got their other sets on clearance. It's good enough. I don't need this thing. Well, I think so funny about it. And I think we were talking about this on our show the other day. Like it's this like, you know, big Boba Fett's throne room. You can reenact the fun 30 seconds that they were there <laughs> for, for all of that show. Like. Yeah, that's 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 also well, but I mean to be fair, you can remove the throne and all the bullshit in the back. 
Yeah. And it is it is usable as a return of the Jedi diorama. Mm-hmm. But I don't I don't know, man. They just they didn't nail this one. They just yeah. didn't. So yeah, that's that's our Star Wars. They're they're not that's our Star well. Wars. All right, we're going to wrap this thing up, and it's time to talk NECA, who I think are the undisputed champions of Toy Fair 2022. Uh, First thing they showed were the dogs from The Thing. That's some creepy toys. Well, and that's, I mean, it was pretty inevitable because we got two different versions of Kurt Russell. One, the kind of like going out to fly the helicopter version and then the flamethrower version. And as soon as they showed the flamethrower version, you're like, well, they're going to make the dogs. Mm-hmm. So they did two different dogs. They've got one that's the fully like split open face, tentacle, crazy dog. Uh, and then they've got the dog that's still like kind of recognizable as a dog. This is horrifying to me. I have very, I have a very low tolerance for like bad things happening to dogs. But the thing is the greatest horror movie of all time. So I will buy these. Although I will say this NECA, Mezco, every other toy company in the world, Hasbro has thrown down the gauntlet with their timber figure. If you motherfuckers cannot keep up with Hasbro's mass market retail timber figure, you need to re examine your abilities. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, moving on from that, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Universal Monsters, designed by the fucking phenomenal James Groman, uh, one of the designers on Mad Balls, My Pet Monster, like one of the great 80s toy designers who has found a resurgence in modern toys. Uh, James Groman designed all of these TMNT Universal Monsters figures. Uh, They showed Mikey the Mummy, which looks fantastic. And here's a great head sculpt. Dude, well, it's got two different heads. And the one that's like screaming or whatever. The teeth, yeah. Yes, is incredible. So here's where I'm at on these TMNT Universal Monsters. This is not something I need in my collection. However, when I go to Target looking for something else and they don't have it, but they do have these, I know I'm going to buy these. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they look incredible. They're great. They showed the, uh, I think it was Leonardo as the hunchback Mm -hmm. that had this, the tribute to the storage shell turtles. His shell opens up and there's like, fucking shelves inside with scrolls and skulls and stuff on it. These are incredible horror toys that are not something that I look at. And I think I have to have that, but I know when I run into them in a store, I'm going to buy them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay. The next thing we have to talk about, I don't totally understand did you see this holothon thing? Yeah, what I don't know what that is. I nobody knows what this is. All we know is it's Target and it's NECA. It starts March 18th. And in theory, we will be able to purchase NECA products online from Target and in store. Although I look. Yeah. I think we're all, we're all adults. We understand what in-store purchasing is like now in 2022. But supposedly this holothon thing is going to give us the ability to buy things from Target. I don't know, man. Uh, I'll believe it when it happens. But it but it's specifically NECA and Target. Yeah. And I I, does NECA, do they still rely on the brand, whatever they were calling them, the ambassadors or whatever that NECA program was? Oh, I don't know. I, I stopped because I was one for a little while and like I never got because I, I would I was uh, when they whenever they started that program, I think I feel like it was late 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was deep in I, every like twice a week. 
I was sending in pictures of the NECA section in Target. I never got any feedback, never heard anything at all. And eventually I was like, I don't, I don't care. And I yeah. even sent an email saying like, I'm opting out of this. This is not for me. So I don't know whatever came of that. Uh, so whatever, Holothon, March 18th, Target and NECA. Maybe something will happen. Yeah. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mirage figures. Damn you, NECA, <laughs> for figuring out another format of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that I would buy. Yeah, they uh, they because I don't allies. care. I don't care about the animated stuff that they do because I never really liked the cartoon. Mm-hmm. The movie stuff, I'm all in on. But I never even imagined they would revisit because if you remember, like 12 years ago or something, NECA released Mirage Turtles. Uh-huh. And I just t- didn't think they'd go back to that. But now, this year, they're showing Renee, which I will say this. They have chosen to produce her in these ugly IDW colors, this brown and yellow that looks terrible. Um, I want the original colors, the blue Mm -hmm. that was on the comic cover and on the first uh, comics color versions of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics. If they do her in blue, I'll buy her. I'm not buying this brown one. I don't like it. Uh, Fugitoid. One of my favorite characters from Ninja Turtles that's not a turtle. But also, if you notice, in the pictures with the Fugitoid, they showed turtles with two different portraits. So my hope is that they're redoing those original Mirage turtles that are very, very expensive now. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we'll see those in a new release because I never got them. Uh, They were very hard to find in the first place, and then they reissued them, and they were still hard to find. Uh, So I still want those NECA Mirage Turtles. And they also uh, also showed an Utram and teased Casey Jones. So now NECA is doing Mirage Turtles, and since, as I mentioned earlier in the show, I discovered the Turtles via the comics before the cartoon, that's my wheelhouse. Yeah. That's something I love. I want comic turtles. So if they're going to do Renee, if they're going to do Savante Romero, if they're going to do all these characters from Mirage, shit. <laughs> Whole other thing I got to buy. <laughs> Nick is very good at that. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're, they are. They really are. Uh, so I mentioned their animated line, which I'm not into. I'm, I wasn't into the cartoon, but one of the cool things that they showed They've got a couple of two packs that are going up on NECA's website for pre-order. So this is a deal where you can order as many of these as you want for a certain amount of time. So you don't have to worry about not getting them. Mm-hmm. They're doing two packs. One of them is Rock Soldier and the Crooked Ninja Turtle Gang. Do you remember the Crooked Ninja Turtle Gang? Yes. <laughs> so the awesome thing is they've got two troop builders together in a two-pack because obviously there are four members of the crooked ninja turtle gang and if you get four rock soldiers that works out really well that's fine yeah and then they're also doing a two-pack of zach who is the leader of the crooked ninja turtle or i'm sorry smash is the leader of the crooked ninja turtle gang and then zach is some kind of like computer guy i don't remember him yeah yeah but I do remember the Crooked Ninja Turtle gang. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's great. Usagi Ojimbo. Animated version. But was he? I don't think he was ever on the cartoon. I don't think he was. He was in the comics. Yeah. But regardless, I buy pretty much every Usagi that comes out. Mm-hmm. I will buy this one. Uh, looks great. And the display that they had him in with like the dimensional portal and Usagi and like the cloak, like they really did some cool framing with uh, the announcement of this guy, but I'll buy any Usagi figure that comes out, whether it's 
uh, comic book, animated, whatever, I'll buy it. I, I love that character. Uh, and then finally, a teaser for the turtle van. Now we know Super Seven is doing the party wagon, uh-huh. but NECA has hinted at doing the van a few times. And in this display, they had a sewer diorama with a manhole cover that said like turtle van access or something. So we know NECA is working on the van as well. Oh, so much money. Yeah, I don't. uh, Like I said, I'm not collecting the animated stuff. And I'm not even buying. I am collecting Super 7's Ultimates, but I'm not buying that party wagon. I just can't justify it, man. Yeah. How much is that party wagon? It was like $400 or something. Oof. I and I look, I bought the Thunder Tank. I sold, I made a deal with myself that if I could sell enough stuff to pay for the Thunder Tank, I would order it. And I did. So that happened. But the party wagon, like, I got the, uh, you know, Playmates recently reissued the original party wagon. Uh huh. And I got one of those. And you know what? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm sure Super Sevens is going to be fantastic. Oh yeah, it's going to be amazing. But dude, I just cannot. I I can't justify it. Uh, all right. Oh, they did comic slash too. I'm a sucker for slash. Okay, so that was the other category I had. Is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Archie comics figures? They showed Slash, Mm -hmm. who looks great. They showed Jaguar and Dreadmon. And I didn't even remember until they showed these. I didn't remember that I bought and read those Archie comics, but I really enjoy. I liked those more than I liked the cartoon, but here's what jogged my memory is Ray Filet slash man Ray dude of the mighty mutanimals. <laughs> this is a figure I will buy. Uh, I don't need Slash. I don't need Jaguar and Dreadmon. But that Man Ray, yeah. that fucking giant, cocky, superhero looking. Because <laughs> Ray Filet was one of my favorite original Ninja Turtles figures. Uh-huh. But the comic version of this looks so good. I'm into it. So, yeah, Archie Comics, another new segment of Ninja Turtles that NECA is exploring. Uh, and then finally, to, to, to well, two more things to wrap up NECA's Ninja Turtles. They're doing, uh, if you remember, the first time that they offered the movie Turtles, it was in a VHS four pack. Uh-huh. It came in a big giant box that looked like the old VHS. Well, they're doing a secret of the ooze VHS four pack with the turtles from the second movie, but they're also doing an accessory set that comes with alternate heads, a bunch of different accessories and costume pieces. And then Toka and Razor pre mutation. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's something I've got to get because movie turtles are something I'm going to keep buying They've they've already teased that they're doing uh oh gosh what Ernie Reyes are they gonna do him yes they're doing his pizza boy character mm-hmm. and you guys they gotta do Tatsu they gotta do um vanilla ice vanilla ice and I feel like vanilla vanilla ice would be up for it I think so too. Like, I don't think there would be any problem with making that happen. So, like, movie turtles, I'm all in on. Yeah. Uh, And then the other thing was the, we already mentioned the Playmates Toys last Ronin figure. Well, NECA is doing two last Ronins, one, like, fully armored up and one shirtless. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's sexy turtle Ronin. I don't know what the deal is. Like I said, I haven't read the comics yet, but they're doing two different versions. Um, let's see. 
Just a couple more things from NECA. Uh, Defenders of the Earth, they showed Lothar, Mandrake, and Garax. Garax was kind of the new one. He's one of the villains from the show. Looked pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not buying these, but I like that they're doing them. It's cool. Yeah, I looked at them the other day. I haven't picked any of them up yet, though. Yeah, they're fine. Uh, the Stone Heart Predator from the Predator Concrete Jungle video game. I got to tell you, I think I've got as many Predators as I need. I think Nega has some like deal with they must continue to make Predator toys to stay in business. Like it's, it's I mean that and look, it's it's a it's got its fan base that's crazy that'll buy everything that they do and good for them and then I get it if I if I was only collecting NECA stuff, I'd buy all the Predators that they make. Did you see the um, Shaman Predator they put out? Yes, that one looked pretty badass. Yeah, that thing's pretty awesome. I dug it with the big skull face on it. Uh-huh. Uh, they showed the ex- or officially announced the accessory set for the Universal Monsters Mummy. Comes with a sarcophagus. Mm-hmm. $42, though. Oh, <laughs> I've seen a price on it. That's... Uh, <sighs> I mean, it's, old. it's just the sarcophagus and the chest, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, that, they look nice and all, but shit, man. Yeah, that's a lot for that. Uh, and then finally, we're going to wrap it up with this because I think this is the appropriate thing to wrap it up with. NECA, 8-inch retro cloth, Elton John. <laughs> Dude, okay, so... This is not the Elton John that I want, only because I I hate baseball. But it's Elton John in the baseball costume with the piano. They're Uh making a big, giant piano. Live in 75. It looks like it has three different head sculpts. I think so. Dude, this is incredible. And... Look, this is the kind of thing that NECA does that makes them so special. I want multiple Elton Johns. I want NECA to get the license to do Prince figures in this same style. Mm -hmm. Because the fact that we don't have Prince action figures is a crime. But this Elton John looks incredible. Like, And I said, this isn't the Elton John that I want. But I'll tell you right now. If I happen to see this at retail, like if I walk into Target and this is on the shelf, I'm going to buy it. Mm -hmm. Because Elton John is one of the greatest musical creators of all time. 100%. And as much as like I would rather have several other costumes, if I see this, I'm going to buy it. I'd really, I want a Freddie Mercury to go with this piano. Oh, dude. Well, and that's like there's so because NECA is invested in in music as well. Super Seven and NECA both have really interesting musical representation going on. Super Seven doing a circle jerks figure. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like there's so much wild, cool stuff going on right now, and really, that's the problem because in, in a you know in a different world, I would pay forty two bucks for the for the sarcophagus for the mummy. But there's so much other cool shit that I can't justify that because I know right around the corner there is like a Prince Purple Rain figure with a motorcycle probably mm-hmm. happening at some point. Sheila E accessory. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, um, it's like NECA, like they revealed the rest of the gargoyles. And yeah, they did uh they did an interesting thing where they teamed up with a lot of toy like influencers or whatever. Uh, and yeah, they showed the rest of the gargoyles, and I think that pre-orders and stuff are going to come along with Holothon, which launches on March 18th. Uh, but those that and that's what I said before about um, the Universal Monsters Ninja Turtles. How if I walked into a store and saw them when I was looking for something else, that's how they'd get me. That's how they got me with Goliath. Yeah, like. Gargoyles is great. I dig it, but it's not something that I'm like, oh shit, I got to have figures of that. But I went into Target looking for something else and they didn't have it, but they did have that Goliath. And I was like, shit, I'm buying that Goliath. 
Yeah, that thing is amazing. It's badass. So now I want the rest of the gargoyles. Yep. So looking back at everything that we've talked about, is there one thing that you can point at that is kind of your favorite, most exciting thing that we talked about? It's been hard this year. Like, I feel like there wasn't anything that like, and maybe it's the discombobulated watching it everywhere. There was not like right, one right. huge thing that like blew me away like crazy. I mean, probably the one I'm most excited about getting is that Damian Wayne, um, just to finally get a Robin to go with him. Um, but yeah, the main lines I collect really didn't show anything that awesome. I mean, I think Naka, you know, put on the best show, but it's not a lot of stuff I collect. Yeah, I got to say, I think NECA owned whatever this sort of event thing was. <laughs> February. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, but the thing, and, and I don't even know if I'll end up buying it. Well, I, I said I'll probably end up ordering it. The thing that like blew my mind the most and got me the most excited and was the biggest like, holy shit, I can't believe they're making that reaction, was that Zorro the Gay Blade figure. That bunny, bunny Wigglesworth. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, when I saw that, just the joy of seeing, like, shit. Somebody out there has as much regard for that movie <laughs> as I do. Uh-huh. And, and I just wish it was a six-inch scale, or a, a, a one-twelfth scale figure. Yeah, yeah. It's just not as exciting to me. As much as 3.75, as much as one eighteenth scale was the scale I grew up with, that figure, like, I want a Mezco Zorro the Gay Blade. <laughs> that thing would be amazing. That would be incredible. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we got. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for coming on and talking about toys once again. Uh, tell us a little bit about Execute Chapter 66. Yeah, so I co-host Execute Chapter 66 with Beth and Chad, who you've heard on this podcast. We do uh, bi-weekly Star Wars book, not really reviews, discussions, I guess. Yeah, Um, yeah. Just put out our Book of Boba Fett episode where you can hear me yell about the Book of Boba Fett. I can't can't even listen to it. I've already (laughs) said, like, I, I know I'm not doing it. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's where you can find me. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on and talking toys again, man. And, uh, hopefully we'll have more toy news soon and, and maybe some pricing and some dates on all the shit that we talked about tonight. <laughs> we'll be talking about the same pre-orders. <laughs> uh, yeah, seriously. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. And that was Toy Fair. 2022 except it really wasn't but it kind of was and and who cares anyway because all we need to know is there are going to be tons of new pre-orders that we have to deal with and watch uh over the next two three years however long it takes for all these things to come out i can't wait to see these ninja turtles and that's what i told phantom jr when we were talking about that batman and two-face set uh you know as much as i'd like to have that if i spent that money on that and then those turtles went up for pre because I have a feeling there are going to be a box set. Uh, and those pop up for pre-order like tomorrow or within the next week or even the next month. I'm going to be like, God damn it. I, I spent the money on that Batman and Two-Face and I have to have Mezco Ninja Turtles. Uh, and it's crazy because there was so much Ninja Turtles stuff. NECA with their massive variety of turtles. Uh, oh, and by the way, the Rene figure... I'm guessing it's Renee and not Renet. It's R E N E T. Uh, that I want in blue. I, I didn't order it. Like as much as I want Mirage Turtles figures, uh, I want them to look like the old covers or the first re- uh, the reprints that first comics did in color. Uh, I don't like the IDW recolors on a lot of things, especially not that Renee figure. That brown is just ugly. I don't know why you would do that. Uh, So, anyway, uh, check out the Needless Things YouTube channel. Check out the Needless Things podcast Facebook group. Uh, Join us over there for the occasional survey that will help us decide what the heck to do here on the show. Uh, Follow Needless Things podcast on Instagram, Phantom Troublemaker on Instagram. Uh, I, I try to keep it fun. We try to have fun around here. Thanks for listening. 
I love you guys. You have been listening to a Needless Things podcast. You can follow Needless Things on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at needlessthingspodcast.com. Love you. Mean it. Uh Uh-huh.